Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid that gets angry at his teacher so decides that, you know, his revenge will be uh, farting in the teacher's face and then going completely insane. This is probably one of the weirdest stories I have ever received, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber Noah. So this all happens one day when Noah is just chilling in his class, and there's another guy in his class, and we're gonna call this guy the Minecraft Kid, cause he's obsessed with Minecraft, he's always wearing the Creeper hoodie, you already know how it goes, and obviously, right, if you like Minecraft, this video is not against you, because bro, I love Minecraft, look at the background gameplay. But anyways, right, so Noah was just chilling in class, and he looks to like his left, and directly like to the next of him, directly adjacent to him, is the Minecraft kid. And him and the Minecraft kid weren't like best friends or anything, but he had nothing necessarily against the Minecraft kid. And the teacher was beginning, beginning the lecture on whatever it was. And he sees the Minecraft kid, you know, he had his computer out because everyone had their computers out. It was like sixth grade. And that was like the first time that like, you know, they were given school computers or whatever, or Chromebooks, or I, I don't even know. He had his computer out though. And like, you could have your school given Chromebook or school issued Chromebook, or you could bring your own computer. So the Minecraft kid, you know, brought his gaming computer. And the difference with today and any other day is Noah looked over and saw the Minecraft kid reach into his backpack, pull out a mouse pad and a gaming mouse. You know one of those like gaming mice that like all light, light up and glow and all that stuff? Yeah, he whipped out one of those. And at first Noah's like, oh, he just wants to use a, like a mouse instead of the trackpad. Like, that's totally understandable. Trackpad sucks. I 100% agree. And anyways, right, you know, Noah doesn't even really pay that much attention. And that is until he hears the Minecraft soundtrack. Super, super, super loud. Minecraft soundtrack is beautiful. I've actually like gone to sleep to it a couple of times on Spotify. But that's, that's beyond the point, right? Anyways, right, so Noah is like, he realizes that the Minecraft kid next to him is not only like not really caring that, you know, he has his entire gaming setup out, he also just doesn't care that Minecraft music is blasting away. And sure enough, right, you know, you hear the Minecraft soundtrack, you hear the walking footsteps in Minecraft, you hear him beating up some chicken and the chicken making like squeaking noises or whatever. And so Noah's just like, oh my god, like this kid's gonna get in a ton of trouble. But sure enough, right, the music was just so loud that the teacher, like, turns around and, like, looks at, like, the Minecraft kid and is like, Minecraft kid, like, turn down that music. Like, you can't be playing music in class. So the teacher didn't realize that this was just, like, music to a video game. The teacher just thought that the Minecraft kid was playing, like, music in class, which, you know, sometimes kids have, like, tried to, like, listen to music, but normally they'd use headphones or whatever. And the teacher says, hey, no listening to music in class. You gotta be paying attention. So the teacher kind of doesn't think anything more of it and goes, back to their work. And so the Minecraft kid, sure enough, just turns off the volume, but keeps on playing Minecraft. And it's super obvious because he's like whipping his like mouse around and like clicking really fast and doing all this stuff. And obviously if the teacher paid like really close attention, he would realize that the Minecraft kid was not just listening to music, but was not listening to music at all, but instead was playing a video game with music in the background. So anyways, right, Noah's like, dude, this kid's gonna get caught. And sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft kid, I think in the beginning was playing like normal Minecraft, but then he goes on to one of those servers. I think he's playing Bed Wars or something. And this kid is like really good at Bed Wars. And when you're really good at Bed Wars, a lot of times you'll be clicking super fast so that you can place more blocks. Or maybe when you're fighting someone, you take less knockback and you might get more hits. So this kid starts butterfly clicking, which is when you take two fingers and rapidly slam your mouse with it. And sure enough, right, the kid in the middle of class starts spamming his mouse, like And Noah was just like, dude, that's so loud. And sure enough, the teacher turns around and is like, hey, Minecraft kid, are you playing video games in class? And the Minecraft kid legitimately keeps on clicking because apparently he's in the middle of like a fight or something, like a PvP fight, and keeps on clicking, ignores the teacher for a good 10 seconds. The teacher looks at him in disbelief, and the Minecraft kid looks up and is like, huh? And the teacher's like, shut off your like shut off your computer. You're not allowed to be playing video games in class. First you're listening to music, now you're playing video games. Like that's super disrespectful and distracting. You're not just distracting yourself, you're distracting everyone else in the class, and that is totally not fair fair for them. And he said, and then the teacher followed up by saying, Minecraft kid, you're on super thin ice. 
turn off like your video game. So the Minecraft kid is like, ah, oh, whatever, man. And like, you know, closes the computer, like turns, like closes the computer screen, whatever. And kind of like slumps back in his chair with his arms crossed because man, he just, you know, he was, he wanted to play Minecraft. He didn't want to pay attention to what, whatever was going on in class, right? So at this point, Noah thinks that the Minecraft kid is done being stupid in class, but Noah was very, very wrong to say the least. Because anyways, right, Noah kind of goes back to paying attention to the class, you know, trying to like take some notes. He's trying to do well in this class. And then Noah, to his surprise, hears clicking noises. And he's like, all right, there's no chance that like the Minecraft kid is back to playing his video games. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid had taken out his computer again and went back to playing Bed Wars. And once again, he's on his mouse going like clicking it literally as fast as he possibly could. And that he's not being slick. He's not being like anything like, he's not being clever or anything like that. Cause the teacher immediately turns around and is like, Minecraft kid, I told you, like you can't be playing video games in class. I already told you, you were on super thin ice. Like that's it. If you can't like pay attention and you're gonna be distracting everyone else, then you can't be in this class. Go to the principal's and like principal's office and she'll deal with you. And the Minecraft kid just looks at him and says, what did you say to me? And the, and the teacher's like, no back talk. Go to the principal's office now. And from here on, things were about to get much, much worse. But real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment, as Minecraft is the secret word of the day. And by the way, if you've been binge watching my videos, please leave a comment like this down below so I can heart it, maybe reply, just so I can know that you're doing it and say thank you. Because when you watch a bunch of my videos in a row, it really does help out the channel more than you can even imagine. And I mean, also, if you want to be like this guy, guy, I'm not saying to leave a playlist of my videos on overnight when you go to sleep with the volume on 1%, but I'm also not saying not to do that, wink. Wink, 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 nod, smile. Anyways, back to the story. This is where it gets crazy. So at this point, the teacher has told the Minecraft kid that, you know, he needs to go to the principal's office right now. And the Minecraft kid is not happy about this at all. And so sure enough, you know, the teacher, let me just paint the picture for you guys. The teacher is sitting down at their desk, at their chair, whatever, right? And the Minecraft kid walks up to go to like the door to leave the class, presumably, right? You know, cause he, you know, he has to go to the principals and whatever, right? So he walks up to the front of the class. At this point, everyone has kind of been paying attention. Noah's like, wow, like this kid, you know, whatever. I mean, if you, the punishment fits the crime, if you're being an idiot, like play stupid games, expect, expect stupid consequences, like it is, or expect stupid prizes. That's the actual phrase, uh, <laughs> my fault. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid does something absolutely crazy because he walks up to the front of the class and he slows down as soon as he gets to his teacher. And the teacher's like, keep moving. Principal's office is that way. And as soon as the teacher says, keep moving, the principal office is that way, the Minecraft kid runs over to the teacher and the teacher, remember, is sitting down and sitting down at a pretty low desk slash chair. And the Minecraft kid stands like whips out a chair, s puts it down from the teacher. And the teacher is in the middle saying, hey, and the Minecraft kid steps on the chair, turns around and rips the biggest fart you've ever heard in the teacher's face. Like this is the most ridiculous thing Noah has ever seen in his life. And in Noah's head, he was like, hmm, huh, what? Uh, 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 huh? And the, the, the teacher was just as shocked. The teacher's just like in a state of disbelief, also a state of like stink because like, man, the Minecraft kid was eating like mega, like, like, I don't know. He was eating like premium beans for the last seven months before doing this fart, bro. I swear to God, like Noah said he could like legit, like smell it from being like 20 feet away. And the, and then the teacher's like, oh God. And then the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, 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 and then runs away. So the teacher is now steaming mad because he's got this big old fart that was just like landed in his face. This kid is destroying his entire class. So now the Minecraft kid is like, catch me if you can, and starts running around the class. And the teacher 
is so mad right now. Like, the teacher is so angry. So the teacher starts sprinting after the kid. And the Minecraft kid is like, nyang, nyang. it just starts, like, running around the class, pushing over chairs to make it harder for the teacher to get. And the teacher's like, that's it. You're gonna, you're gonna be, ex you're gonna be suspended for so long. You'll be lucky if you don't get expelled. I'm calling up your parents, and I'm writing a full report. And Noah and everyone else in that class was just sitting there with their mouths dropped super, like, his, their mouths dropped dropped open to the floor they were just like what is going on like oh my god like i knew this kid was a little weird but seriously what is going on right now and so the minecraft kid is sprinting around the class kind of doing like so you know like in football where you kind of like psych them out and then you go the other way and the teacher is kind of lumbering around like every second that you're running everything that you're pushing over every like millisecond that you're not like obeying me and going to the principal's office your punishment is increasing by a hundred percent which really doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a cat like you can't really punish someone beyond expelling them so what's like three hundred thousand percent beyond expelled i don't really know you tell me so anyways, right, the, the Minecraft kid's like, nye, 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 and then eventually, right, the Minecraft kid accidentally, like, trips on something. The Minecraft kid falls, and at this point, the teacher has made, made up enough ground to grab the Minecraft kid by the hood of his, by, like, the scruff of his creeper hoodie, and it's like, you uh, uh, are uh, uh, coming with uh, me. And the entire class is so silent as this is the most ridiculous thing they have ever seen in their life. And Noah is just like, oh my God, do I have a, do I have a story to tell my mom? So anyways, the Minecraft kid is being dragged out by his creeper hoodie and all four legs are flailing. He's like, no, no, no. And then like the teacher goes out the door, slams it shut. The entire class is silent. No one's mumbling. You would have thought that people would have been like, wow, wow, that was crazy, guys. I wonder what's... No, nope. It was dead silent. Nobody uttered a word. And because of the silence, they were able to hear very clearly the teacher yell, hey, get back here. And within about 20 seconds of them hearing the teacher yell that, they, they once again see the class door slam open and the Minecraft kid with his like his hair all messed up and his clothes all kind of like ripped up a little bit, runs into the classroom, slams the door shut and then locks it. Because for some reason, this door locks from the inside, which actually I guess that does make sense, but he locks it from the inside. You didn't need a key, you just need to press something. And the Minecraft kid, goes over to the teacher's desk after locking the door, literally takes his foot and kicks off everything, including like a $500 Chromebook, right? And that kind of breaks on the floor. All the books fall over. The teacher's coffee mug flies off the desk and like smashes on the floor. And the Minecraft kid steps on the teacher's chair and then steps on the desk and is like, attention! I mean, dude, he didn't really need to say attention, to get their attention because literally everyone was paying attention to this guy at this point. The Minecraft kid goes on to declare himself as the ruler of the class and that he is now the dictator and they must do what he says. And everyone in the class is just like completely silent because they're just so shocked by the chain of events that just happened. And the Minecraft kid says, now as ruler of the class, you must refer, refer to me as Lord. You will not call me by my name. Let's call him Joseph. You will not call me by my name, Joseph. You will only call me by Lord. And everyone in the class is just like, huh? This is bit like, they're just like, what happened in the last seven minutes of this class? How did we get from learning about the quadratic equation to, to this, to having a kid like, fart in the teacher's face, run away from them, close the door, slam all their stuff off the desk, and declare himself ruler of the class. How did we get here? So anyways, right, you know, they're basically held hostage by the Minecraft kid because, you know, sure enough, like, people come to the door, they're slamming on it, they're like, hey, let us in, and the Minecraft kid's like, nobody go, nobody go to that door, like, nobody dare do it. And one kid is like, hey, like, I gotta go to the bathroom because at this point, you know, they were kind of, like, accepting that the Minecraft kid was the de facto ruler, at least for the next, like, ten minutes or so. And, you know, the Minecraft kid's like, no, 
that's treacherous. You just want to let them in. And the kid's like, dude, no, like, I really got to pee. And Minecraft kid's like, that's too bad. You should have thought of that before I took over. And the kid's like, bro, like, how would I have known that any of this nonsense was going to happen? And Minecraft kid is like, <laughs> too bad, so sad. So at this point, Joseph was sitting in, or Noah, not Joseph, sorry, that's the name I gave the Minecraft kid. At this point, Noah was sitting in class, and he was getting, like, kind of, like, he was getting pretty upset. He just didn't want to deal with, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore. He was like, this kid is a menace, he's totally insane. The thing is, Noah's actually trying to pay attention in class. Like, Noah is trying to, like, get his grade back because he was struggling on the first couple tests, so he was really committing to learning the material. And uh, he was getting kind of angry that he was kind of being robbed of this experience. As funny as he thought it was, he really didn't want to, like, have to deal with this much longer. So Noah was thinking to himself, all right, there are most likely security guards at the door. If not some kind of adult, they can help us in this situation. Because for the last couple of minutes or so, people have been slamming on the door, let us in, Minecraft kid, or Joseph, let us in, Joseph. Like, you've got to let us in, man. Your punishment will be worse. Or it will be wor uh, your punishment will be worse the longer this is. And so, you know, at this point, Noah is like, all right, I think I'm just going to make a dash for it. But I got to cover it up so this crazy kid doesn't, like, fart attack me or something. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't want freaking pink eye, bro. Like, that's disgusting. So Noah's like, hey, like, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid's not the brightest man ever, so he's like, sure, peasant, go ahead. And he's like, wait. No. And then Noah's like, dude, what? He's like, ask me again, but you must refer to me as Lord. And, and Noah in his head is like, all right, this kid freaking sucks, but I'm about to ruin him. So yeah, whatever he wants for his next 30 seconds of rulership. So he's like, my Lord, do you mind if I sharpen my pencil? And the Minecraft kid is like, mm, fine, peasants, go ahead. And like the Minecraft kid is like sitting on the desk and he's kind of made it like a king, like a kind of like a king throne in a sense. And everyone is kind of like whispering to each other, like going on their phones, like trying to like contact people. But sure enough, right, Noah kind of walks up and is very calmly walking towards the, you know, the pencil sharpener, which was on the other side of the room as the door. It was towards the front of the room, which means he didn't have to do a massive sprint, but it was kind of on the other side. So he's walking very slowly to the principal, to the pencil sharpener. And that's when he's able to look out the door. And sure enough, there are like, he sees the outlines of two pretty big guys. And he's like, all right, these are the security officers. And, uh, you know, as the Minecraft kid is like disciplining someone being like, no, you must refer to me as Lord because they asked a question or something uh, that no one realized that that was his moment. That was his opportunity. So he changes direction incredibly quickly, sprints towards the door. And the Minecraft kid is like, peasant, what are you doing? And at that point, Noah goes to the door, quickly unlocks it, opens it up, steps aside and two big security guards run into the room and they just grab the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, my peasants fight for me. I have been a great ruler. I've been a great king. No. And he's dragged out. And at this point, right, the teacher returns to the classroom, completely out of breath. Her hair is all frizzed up. And she's just like, class, I don't think I have it in me to finish the class today. Uh, I will, like, allow you guys to have recess or break period. I, I will have to monitor you guys, but please don't ask me to do anything. I, I just don't, I don't have the, I don't have the energy or willpower right now. And the entire class was very understanding as this, you know, when you go to teacher school, when you take the final exam, uh, the final exam for being a teacher, there's no final, like, you trick question of like, what do you do if a Minecraft kid farts in your face and then literally starts a coup and takes control of your classroom? That's not on the final exam. That's not in the job description. So everyone was pretty, you know, they're pretty forgiving. What ends up happening, however, is the teacher doesn't like monitor them. The teacher just gets another person to watch after them because the teacher's actually going to the hospital because her eyes and her entire face were feeling weird. What ended up happening was both the teacher 
ended up getting like had to go to the hospital and got like pink eye like a very severe case and got like an eye infection she's totally fine now apparently but when the minecraft kid farted in her face all these like gross disgusting germs got in there and it could have been really bad and because of all the nonsense that the minecraft kid was doing he was suspended for two entire weeks honestly he's lucky that he didn't get expelled but he was also afterwards after those two weeks were up he was invited back to the classroom and he had to also also during those two weeks write a paper saying why what he did was wrong and apologize to everyone and he was forced to read that in front of the entire class and Noah tells me that it was probably the most awkward experience click on the of video on life. screen right now I know you'll enjoy it just click it do it What's up guys? Today we got three story times of the cringiest kids ever. The first story is of a kid who tries to become a spice king and ends up uh well throwing up in the cafeteria. The second story is of a kid who asks out a girl in the middle of class in the most cringy way possible. And the final story is of a spoiled kid who gets a stain on his fancy pantsy shirt and you guys will not believe how he reacts. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing and let's just jump right into it. Anyways, we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the first story, Ty. So anyways, this all happened on what seemed like a normal day. Ty and his friends were in the cafeteria. So there's another kid who we're gonna call Ben. And Ben was kind of the kid that uh, always tried to seek attention and that's how he thought he was gonna be liked. You know, it's kind of a sad situation because I knew a lot of those kids back in the day that they thought, you know, they maybe were self-conscious of the number of friends they had or really the lack of friends they had. And they thought if they put on a clown show, they would be able to have more friends. Quickly, like and subscribe right now to claim your free nothing. Anyways, though, so yeah, this, uh, this all started off as a normal day. And uh, Ty and his friends, they were sitting at the cafeteria, and they had cafeteria food. You could bring in your own food, but most of the time, they just have the cafeteria food. And Ty tells me, this food's not great, bro. Like, it really is very average or whatever. It's, it's, it's just simply not that good. Which, you know, so they're sitting there kind of like picking at their mush or whatever, and uh, Ben, this kid I was telling you about, sits down at their table. So Ben will kind of like float around from table to table. I've told you before, he doesn't really have a stable friend group, which is probably the reason why he's always acting out. And uh, he's like, you know, he sits down. He's like, boys, this lunch is going to be for the history books. So Ty looks at him. He's like, uh, what do you mean? Because I don't know why like a lunchtime would be so memorable. Right, so Ty and his friends kind of look at each other a little bit confused because it's kind of like, you know, why is this kid saying this is going to be a lunch to put down in the history books? That just doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyways, though, so, the, you know, the spo not the spoil, could, sorry, Ben elaborates and he, you know, grabs his lunch bag because he brought in lunch today and puts it on the table. And Ty and his friends are kind of like looking at this lunch bag like, okay, bro, I see you have a lunch bag and you put it on the table. I'm not super sure what this means, but cool, I guess. And he's like, boys, I am going to do the spicy food challenge like the Spice Kings on TikTok. And they kind of look at each other. If you don't know, there's these people that are called Spice Kings, I think, or just people that um, eat a lot of spicy food in short form videos on YouTube Shorts, on TikTok, on Instagram Reels. Basically, they post videos of themselves eating, you know, spicy peppers, spicy chips, just like a lot of spicy food, allegedly in one sitting, um, trying to have like no reaction or whatever, and it's it, whatever, right? You can do what you want to do. I have no actual issue with that type of content. However, I think Ben thought it was such a good idea for him to do this to kind of show off to the kids or, or show off to like Ty and his friends and try and get their approval or whatever, which I mean, hey bro, at the end of the day, like this is not how you, the thing is you're not going to become friends with people long term because you're able to pull off funny stunts or whatever. You're not going to be able to become friends with people just because I don't know, like you're you're, you're going to become friends with people because you spend a lot of quality time with them. You share hobbies. You're a good person to them. You are consistent. That's how you're actually going to become friends with people, not by pulling off stunts like this. Anyways, though, so yeah, sure enough, Ty takes out the stuff out of his bag. And in his bag, there are three things. There's a thing of jalapeno peppers. There's a thing of hot, spicy Takis, and then there's the one chip. If you don't know about the one chip challenge, well, let me explain it to you very briefly. 
basically the one chip. Well, the one chip challenge is this one chip that you can buy, and it's like this one black chip that is ridiculously spicy. There's so many funny videos on the internet of people trying to eat it, it is not being able to do it. So anyways, yes, Ben had both the one chip, spicy Takis, and some spicy probably jalapeno peppers. So at this point, Ty and his friends are like, okay, we don't need this kid like causing a scene. Cause it, look, at the end of the day, they're just trying to chill and eat their lunch. The last thing that they need is a big old situation or whatever that because of proximity, because they are physically nearby, that then they are, they are responsible, right? They're not trying to be responsible for this kid. Totally fair, totally understandable. So yeah, anyways, right? They're kind of like, hey, bro, you really don't need to do that. Um, I'm sure you could, but also, ah, man, we're running low on time. Maybe you want to do that another day. Maybe you want to do that with other people so that we're not responsible. Yeah, there's a lot of things that maybe you'd rather do. And Ben is like, no, boy, it's like, I showed this to you. I had this up. I need to finish it. Like, I need to, like, figure this. Like, I need to show you guys. And he, before they could stop him, he immediately, here's the thing, bro. Normally at these Spice Kings, they'll eat, like, one thing at a time. Yeah, so instead of doing that and putting, like, a, like eating one spicy thing at the time, because if the spoil, not sorry, not spoil kid, if Ben was to eat one of the spicy items at a time, Maybe besides the one chip whatever thing, because uh, that thing's pretty crazy. If he was able to eat a few jalapenos, he would pretty quickly realize, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Because by the way, a little background knowledge, which at the time, Ty and his friends had no idea about, was that Ben had zero <laughs> spice tolerance, bro. He had no ability to handle any heat at all. He just saw people munch this stuff on TikTok and YouTube shorts, and he was like, all right, man, I'm in, bro. Like... I'm good, or something like that. So yeah, sure enough, right? Um, he decides to do something pretty stupid. He takes a fistful of jalapenos, a fistful of spicy Takis, and the one chip, crushes them like all together into a ball, and just eats the whole thing. Chews it super quickly, swallows it, and looks at them and says, no reaction. Okay, after saying no reaction, Ty and his friends look at each other like, oh boy, because they know that the one chip doesn't necessarily hit you immediately, but give it some time, you're screwed. So they're all looking at each other and they're like, ha good job, bro. You don't need to be eating any more of that. And as they're saying that, Ben is already grabbing more fistfuls of jalapenos and spicy Takis. About 10 seconds later though, he stops eating more stuff because I think he starts to feel the upcoming wave of spice start to hit his throat. And he's like, no, uh, no reaction, guys. Does anyone have any water or milk? And they don't. So he quickly gets up. He's like, no reaction, guys, no reaction. I just need, I just need something to drink to like make it easier for me to, oh my God, for me to, uh, uh, for, me, for me to eat more of these guys. Don't, don't worry, no reaction though. And he starts like frantically looking around and Ty and his friends are like, oh boy. So they're like, look, bro, we'll try and get you some milk or something. Like, and he's like, guys, guys, I'm dying. Yeah, so basically within the span of 10 seconds, he went from saying, hey, 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 no reaction to saying, oh my God, oh my God. By the way, if you made it this far into the video, comment spice down below in the comment section. I'm gonna try and heart as many comments on YouTube that say spice. Thank you so much for making it this far. Anyways, so yeah, sure enough, um, he's just kind of, uh, he's dying, bro. Not actually you're not, he's not actually dying. He's fine. He might have some toilet problems, but he's doing all right. But he's basically panting on the floor and Ty and his friends are looking at each other like, bro, this is the exact reason why we didn't want him to do this. We don't want him to actually like harm himself too, but also now we're looped in by association. Like we would be bad people if we just stood up and left. Yeah. So that's when Ben, who's like crawling around on the floor, like milk, I need some milk. And Ty gets up and kind of yells out, someone get this man some milk. Eventually though, yeah, Ben just completely like uh, pukes everywhere. Not to be too graphic, I'll keep it at that. But at that point, the entire lunchroom is are like, oh my God, because everyone's paying attention. Once again, the one thing that Ty and his friends didn't want as well is all the attention, all the negative attention associated with this and all the negative attention being associated with this guy. But 
yeah, what are they going to do about it, though? So, uh, yeah, eventually the lunch lady, the staff, whatever, they come over, they get him some, like, milk or some kind of something to make him feel better and get the spice down. Unfortunately, the cleaning crew had to come over and clean up the situation at hand in the lunchroom. And we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the next story, Zach. So anyways, there's this kid in Zach's class who we're going to call Ben again, because I just use the name Ben for all my secondary characters. Yeah, so there's this kid in Ben's class, or sorry, not Ben, in Zach's class who we're going to call Ben. And uh, Ben had this massive crush on this girl. And we're going to call this girl Ava, right? So Zach, Ben, Ava were all in this class together. And this was sixth grade. So it was like a sixth grade English class. So they had a lot of roundtable discussions. It definitely wasn't like a math class type class. It was, it was like an English, it, it was an English class, right? They kind of, it was, it was kind of chill, right? It was pretty chill. Anyways, Valentine's Day was coming along. And let me just say that me and Valentine's Day, we have beef. I don't have beef with anyone besides the inventors of Valentine's Day, AKA the Hallmark Corporation, bro. You guys are always screwing me over. It's definitely not me and my stupid actions. It's you guys. But anyways, sure enough, Valentine's Day was coming up. And at the school, there was a little bit... Okay, not just at the school. I understand that everywhere, Valentine's Day is like the day of like, ooh, like love or whatever, or chemicals and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, however, especially at their school, Valentine's Day was like the day people waited. They waited for months sometimes. I don't recommend this. But they waited for months sometimes to ask out the person that they had been interested in on Valentine's Day. It was like a special thing at the school to go above and beyond on the day. So every single year on Valentine's Day, the number of couples in the grade would go from like one or two to like eight. Like it would shoot up and then over the next couple of months, it would decay pretty quickly to like four because, hey, bro, a lot of them were just springing out of nowhere. And, you know, a girl gets asked out on Valentine's Day at the school. It was almost like, oh, my God, you got asked out on Valentine's Day? Samantha, you're so lucky, right? So they would always say yes, and then they'd say no like two weeks later and break up. But anyways, I need to let you know the culture of the school. That's kind of how they did things. Anyways, right, so yeah, uh, in Zach's class, there's this kid named Ben. He had a massive crush on this girl named Ava. Ava and Ben never spoke together, and I told you guys it was an English class, kind of like a round table English class. I didn't tell you that for no reason. I told you that because in math classes, for example, in math class, you're probably not going to be able to talk to your crush that much. I mean, hey man, we always find a way, like, you know, you find a way, I find a way. But what I'm trying to say for the most part, in a math class, you're probably not really talking to that many people. Sure, there's some classes that emphasize group work or whatever, but a lot of times you're sitting there, you're listening to the lecture, and then you leave. At least in my, like, my Calc 1 class, there's this girl who sat in front of me, and let's just say that like I was like, wow. But there was like no opportunities. Well, there could have been, but I was also much lamer at the time, so I just didn't make any opportunities for myself unless they were easily given to me. However, in a round table English class, you're basically forced to talk to everyone. However, somehow, Ben and Ava have never spoken in a class that emphasizes speaking with everyone. Even when they were in small groups together, Ben would never say a word to her. So it was a little bit uh, not a good idea that he was planning to ask her out to be his girlfriend <laughs> on Valentine's Day, bro. So anyways, Ben and the subscriber who submitted this story, Zach, which by the way, Zach submitted this to me on Instagram. Go to Instagram, look up Connor Pugs, follow me, and then message me your story. That's where I get a lot of them. Anyways, Zach and Ben were acquaintances. They weren't close friends. Um, they weren't anything like that. However, they were cool with each other. And sometimes they would talk about stuff. And Zach almost had a older brother mentor type relationship, which is kind of funny for sixth graders, right? It's like, y'all are both six, you're both are in sixth grade, bro, like chill out. However, though, um, on February 12th, two days before, before Valentine's Day, Zach and Ben were walking away from class because they had an English class together. They were walking to the locker where they had their backpacks. And they would do this every once in a while. Not every day, but every once in a while they'd talk about life or talk about sports. And sometimes Ben would ask for advice in the girl department. 
And Zach knew that Ben had had this thing for Ava for a while now. And he's like, dude, you need to talk to her. He, he rammed it in again and again and again every single time. He's like, you need to talk to her. And Ben would be like, well, I'm just preparing. I'm just planning. Here's the thing. A lot of you guys don't want to hear it. And a lot of times I didn't want to hear it. If you're constantly in a state of planning or preparing to do something, it could be girls, it could be a business, it could be a school project, you're not doing anything. If you're planning for longer than you really need to, which be honest about yourself, the only thing you're doing is procrastinating. Yeah, the only thing you're doing is procrastinating. So when Ben would keep telling Zach, oh, I'm just preparing myself to be the best person for her. Look, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. I think it's kind of a good space to, it's a good thing to do. Like it's good to always want to better yourself, but don't go down the rabbit hole of, I'm not going to talk to her. I'm just going to self-improve myself until I'm the best version. You will never be the best version of yourself. The whole point is to strive towards that. That is the glory. You will never reach it. You are Sisyphus. You are pushing that boulder up forever. And it will keep rolling down. But the point, it, the point is the pushing up, not getting there. I'm, I don't know why I'm going into this whole rant for you guys. But I've been through so many of these situations when it comes to growth. You just need to talk. You will get better at talking. You're working on your talking, but he would refuse. But on this day, on February 12th, Ben and Zach, you know, Ben told Zach his plans. And he didn't elaborate exactly, which I think if he did, Zach would have actually came in and been like, would have been a lot harsher with him. But more or less, Ben explains to Zach, look, I've been thinking about Ava for a long time. I think it's time I ask her out. It's Valentine's Day. It's weird if I don't ask her, if I'd ask her out on another day. And man, I can't wait another year. And Zach's like, first of all, the whole thing at our school of you can only ask someone out on Valentine's Day is stupid. It's ridiculous. And also, no, like you haven't spoken to her yet, Ben. I've told you this again and again. You have not spoken to this girl Therefore, you're, bro, like, I don't know how else to say it. You need to speak to the girl first for at least a while. You don't even know if you like her. You probably are just madly in love with this false construction of her. That's another thing. Not to get too preachy, but if you never actually interact with these girls or guys, depending on who I'm talking to right now, that you are so obsessed with, you're going to construct a false reality of who they are that they will not live up to. You are in love with your imagination of this fictional character. You're not in love with them. Sorry for being preachy. I just want you guys to not make the mistakes I did. And <laughs> this is a freaking therapy lesson for you and a little bit for me. Anyways, but Ben does not listen. He's like, Zach, I love you, bro. Like, you've always been there for me. I just need to make the call on this one. So Zach says to Ben before they leave, which Zach says if he knew how Ben was going to act, that he would have acted a lot more strongly here. But he says to Ben, look, bro, you can't do this. Like, you can do what you want to do. Like, I actually can't control your life, believe it or not. But you, this is a bad idea, and I promise you it's going to end poorly. You're going to be embarrassed, and I just need you to hear it from me that if you do this, I'm not responsible, basically. And Ben's like, you know what, Zach? You always want the best for me. I appreciate you, but I'm doing this. And Zach's like, okay. February 14th, dun, dun, dun. It is Valentine's Day. Everyone walks into school. There's kind of like this, uh, this energy in the air, knowing that a lot of people are going to have really exciting days today. And there's a lot of girls that are very hopeful and a lot of guys maybe that are hopeful on this day that maybe they'll be asked out. And there's a lot of nervous people knowing that they're going to ask someone out and not knowing the answer, even if they kind of have an expectation of the answer. And then there is Ben, who is about to embarrass himself. Anyways, so let's move to English class. They all get to English class and it's the very beginning. And this is kind of the teacher settling down. And the teacher is a chill, like teacher is kind of fresh out of college or whatever, or fresh out of grad school. I don't know what you need for teaching English. I really don't know, bro. And so uh, this teacher's chill and we'll spend like five minutes at the beginning of the class, like on their phone and be like, guys, this is a warm up period, which basically means the teacher's not trying to teach for the full 45 minutes and just wants to chill on their phone for five minutes. So congratulations, you get to goof around for five minutes. So this kind of like limbo period in class, they're all sitting there. Ava's sitting with her friends. Zach is kind of sitting in the back. 
Zack has a little bit of a pit in his stomach because he knows what's about to happen, but he does not know the degree to which what is about to happen is about to happen. So yeah, sure enough, um, Zack uh, watches as Ben gets up walks over to Ava's desk. He is hoping, he's praying, he thinks that it's going to be short, brutal, and quickly done. A nice, okay, a nice execution in quotations, right? Quick, done, not horse-drawn and carriage or whatever that's called. Very quick and easy. No, he sits down, he's sad, and then he realizes he's an idiot for what he was doing. But no. Ben gets down on one knee and screams, Attention, glass! Attention! And Zach's like, no, no, my son, no! So everyone stops what they're talking about, including the teacher, to look at what's going on. Zach, oh sorry, Ben, not Zach, I would never do this. Ben is on one knee, and he's like, Ava, you mean the world to me, and I wanted you to know that. But I not only wanted you to know that through my words, I wanted you to know that through my song. Ben can't sing, by the way. So this reenactment is probably accurate. Ooh, yeah, Ava. Basically at that level. So he like has a fake, he takes a pencil as a fake microphone, gets up and starts walking around like it's a music video. And he's like, whoa, whoa, yeah, Ava, aw. Bro actually has the freestyling ability of like, Bro, some of these like random. Uh, bro has no freestyling ability. I hope and he, he probably wrote this down beforehand too. And he's like, Ava, every day that I come into class, I feel alive. Yeah, Ava. And she's just sitting there like, oh my god, because she did not expect this today. She probably was talking to some other guy who maybe even already asked her out, right? But she, at the end of the day, she was not expecting this. Yeah, so this goes on for a couple seconds. And that's when, thankfully, this wasn't like a five-minute long song. This wasn't Mirrors by Justin Timberlake, full edition. Good song, by the way, but oh my god, it's nine minutes or something. Anyways, he eventually is like, So, Ava, what will you say? Will you be my girlfriend? And the whole class goes silent. And Ava's like, like, Ben, I'm sorry, I just don't know you. And Ben's like, well, I'm giving you an opportunity to know me very well. <laughs> Dude, if she says no the first time, don't look for a yes. You're not going to get a yes. If you, like, trick her or um, convince her in some other way, like, you uh, shame her into saying yes. Bro, if she doesn't want to say yes the first time, tricking her, shaming her, coercing her, somehow getting her to say yes, that's not a natural yes, bro. Trust me, that's not what you want, guys. Come on now. Anyways, though, so she, yeah, she's just like, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, Ben. She didn't say bro. Sorry, bro. I can't do it. No, she's like, I'm sorry, dude. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. I don't know you like that. I can't. So Ben is like, oh, oh, okay. And he walks back. But Ben doesn't sit next in his old seat. He sits down in the empty seat next to Zach. And they sit there in silence for a little bit as the teacher starts the class a little bit earlier than usual because of, uh, you know, what's going on right now. And uh, she uh, starts a class sooner than usual because she doesn't like the awkward period of silence. And uh, by the end of it, Zach and Ben walk out. And they walk together, but they walk in silence for a second. And that's when Ben says, you're right. And Zach says, don't worry about it, bro. Like, learned a lot today. Don't let this lesson slip you by. And after that, they start talking about freaking Spider-Man or sports. Or they immediately... They immediately jump over the topic because Zach knew that he didn't need to explain anything that Ben didn't learn. As terrible as that was, traumatic events in that regard are sometimes the best teachers. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the third story, Gavin. So anyways, in Gavin's class, there was a spoiled kid. And this spoiled kid was kind of notorious for being a spoiled kid. And he basically gets the same description that I give to 90% of the spoiled kids in my spoiled kid story times. Basically, this kid grew up super rich, and you can grow up super rich and like be a totally fine person, but sometimes it really goes to your head. You think you're better than everyone, you've never been told no, you've never had to work for anything. Take all those characteristics, put this on the spoiled kid in this story. Anyways, so the spoiled kid had this habit. I don't know if it's a habit, I don't know if that's the right word to say, 
But basically, he was a big fan of, like, hype beast culture. There's nothing wrong with having, like, liking the idea of, like, some shirt or whatever that costs a lot more money than it should. I go through phases of being a grandpa and being like, you know what? Shirts should, you should really only pay for the utility of a thing. And then I go through periods of, like, oh, bro, that hoodie is sweet. Like, oh, like, oh, it has that logo? That's cool. I go through periods of both, man. It's just, it's really not that deep. However, it was a type of a situation where the spoiled kid had access to his parents' credit card with basically an unlimited funds on it, which uh, is basically like playing GTA 5, like, but a hacked version. The game loses fun. I never, I actually never play GTA, but I hear from people who have, like, unlimited money glitches. Bro, it's just not fun after a while. The whole point of the game was to get the money. And now that you, you know, I mean, now that you have it all, it loses its value. Anyway, so, so yeah, sure enough, every single day, the spoiled kid will come in with some crazy outfit, right? He was a big fan of flexing. There's nothing wrong. It's, it, flexing is very questionable. Um, having a few nice things, there's nothing that inherently wrong. I mean, I fall for some stuff like that. I'm not going to say I'm perfect, right? Um, uh, but also, like, the spoiled kid literally every single day had some freaking Supreme, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, some, some, some kind of crazy combination of stuff every single day. And every single day was basically new because the spoiled kid at the end of the week would buy a whole new wardrobe just to flex on everyone. And he didn't do so in silence, by the way. The spoiled kid was extremely vocal about his, what he was wearing that day. Let me give you an example. Okay, so random day. Spoiled kid would walk into class Everyone would look at him because he'd have some new Louis Vuitton shirt, frickin' bape shoes, crazy whatever pants. He would have some, some, some kind of combination. And if that's your style, okay, whatever. But basically, the spoiled kid would sit down and he would turn to some random kid. It would actually normally be a different kid like every single time. It's funny. But he would turn to some random kid and he'd be like, do you know how much these shoes cost? And the kid would be like, uh, no. It's like, $400. And he turned to another kid. Do you know how much this shirt costs? Oh, oh, $300. And he would just keep doing this every single day. So it wasn't as if he was just flexing, which is to some degree questionable at this, in general, right? Especially when you go crazy, right? But he was like blatantly flexing. Like, he wasn't just wearing items of clothes with high values, and it's like, oh, there's a high value implied with this clothing. Ooh, whatever, right? He was blatantly stating it, which is just kind of like, oh, oh, okay. Okay, man. So, one, this story, uh, a lot of background, and I know, I know, but it's necessary. This story all starts one day when the spoiled kid, the worst possible thing ever happens to the spoiled kid, and he has a crazy tantrum meltdown, and it's hilarious, but also pretty cringe. So on this day, the spoiled kid was wearing some, like, Louis Vuitton shirt or something, and he comes in, and he's doing his normal routine or whatever, of blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that, and some kid is walking in that day, and he's a little late, because the spoiled kid's always a little late, He's walking by the spoiled kid, kind of in a rush to get back there because he, you know, he's already late, so he's trying to sit down quickly. And the spoiled kid is leaning over to one side to be like, "Do you know how much my freaking this Gucci brick I have? Oh, it's a trillion dollars. <laughs> you can afford that." <laughs> then he leans over to talk to the person to the left of him. This kid is literally Eric Cartman, by the way. If Cartman had a lot of money, right? Uh, he leans over to the left of him. And when he leans over to the left of him, the spoiled kid doesn't realize that the, the other kid who's late is kind of rushing down the aisle. And the kid who's rushing down the aisle has a thermos, a thermos full of soup because he wasn't able to eat breakfast that morning. And the spoiled kid bumps into the kid. And because he bumps into the kid, the kid kind of falls back a little bit. And a little bit of soup, not even the whole thing, a little bit of soup flies out of the kid's thermos and onto the spoiled kid's Louis Vuitton white shirt. So there's a big soup stain on his super expensive shirt that we, he was just about to lean over to the person next to him to explain how expensive it was. So it, like this, the kid is like, oh, bro, I'm so sorry. And he keeps walking by and the spoiled kid's like, how dare you? How 
dare you spill soup? Do you know how much this shirt costs? Do you know how much this shirt costs? And this boy kid like gets up and he's like screaming at this kid. And the teacher is like, spoiled kid, sit down. And the spoiled kid turns around and screams like, he spilled soup on my $300 shirt. <laughs> Do you know how much this shirt costs? And the teacher, okay, I think the spoiled kid was expecting the teacher to be on his side. But I think the teacher had overheard the spoiled kid every single day and was also very aware of the spoiled kid's parents' financial situation and also very aware of that he had access to it because of the rotation of clothes that the spoiled kid had. Every single day, it was something new. So the teacher said, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't wear a $300 shirt in a class. Maybe you shouldn't do that. And the spoiled kid was so shocked that the teacher didn't fold to his every whim, right? That he's like... <laughs> My dad is going to sue the school. It's going to sue you, teacher. It's going to sue you. It points to, like, the kid who's, like, rushing to get to the seat. And the kid's like, okay, bro, like, whatever. Because <laughs> no one takes him seriously. And the spoiled kid is at the edge of tears and then starts crying in the middle of class. This kid has spent the entire year flexing stuff that other people can't afford and doing it blatantly. And the second that he bumps into someone and gets soup spilled on his shirt, he starts crying. The spoiled kid, in tears, runs out of the classroom. And the subscriber, Gavin, who submitted this, just looks at his friend and is like, are you serious right now? From a kid who argues with the teacher over if the sun is real or not, yeah, the sun, to a kid who thinks sitting in chairs is offensive, these are the craziest Gen Z kids you've ever seen. Let's go. So we're gonna call, <coughs> sorry. We're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Jesse. Anyways, so in Jesse's class, there is a kid, and we're just going to call him the Gen Z kid, right? So the Gen Z kid is sitting in class, and today they were learning about space or something. I don't totally know why this happened. This, so this was in fifth grade. I think they were just doing, like, a small unit on space or something. And the teacher was saying something about, like, yada yada, this planet, whatever. And then she said something about the sun. And uh, this kid uh, spent a lot of time on TikTok. And the thing is, right, TikTok, super addictive, you know, the algorithms are made to keep you on there. But also, there's a lot of misinformation that spreads on there because you see someone who says something and it blows up and it reaches a bunch of people and there's no real fact-checking or sources cited. And you kind of just take them at face value. Or maybe not you, but a lot of people do. So this kid, the Gen Z kid, must have seen a TikTok in his For You page being like, guys, the sun isn't real because... I have never been to the sun before, therefore it doesn't exist, which some kind of some kind of like backwards ridiculous logic that makes no sense at all, but it's said with like ominous spooky background music number 28. So anyone who sees it's just like, oh my god, you're right. So yeah, anyways, this all happened when the teacher mentioned something about the sun. And the TikTok kid literally smirks, gives a little laugh, and says out loud, the sun? Don't tell me you guys still believe in the sun. And kind of looking around, right? So Jesse's looking at this kid who literally laughs and says, don't tell me you guys look at the sun or li look at the sun. You don't tell me you guys still believe in the sun as he like looks around at all the other classmates. And uh, believe it or not, all the other classmates, instead of being in agreement, laughing a lot. I, I bet the TikTok kid imagined in his little scenario that what was actually was going to happen with all the other kids were going to be like, oh, yeah, that's so ridiculous. Don't worry, man. We also don't believe in the sun. We saw that niche, obscure, disinformation TikTok video as well. That's totally real. But no, everyone looks at the kid, and the teacher stops, like, teaching for a second because the teacher's like, come again now? Like, what? And the spoil not, not the spoiled kid. I'm so used to telling stories about spoiled kid. Um, the Gen Z kid looks at the teacher and is like, wait, you guys actually still believe in the sun? And he, like, looks around all, like, confused or whatever. And it, everyone's kind of looking at him like, dude, what are you even saying right now? And the kid's like, guys, do not tell me that you guys are falling for the machine and believing that the sun is real. I saw a video on TikTok yesterday that was all like, the sun isn't real because tell me, have you ever been to the sun? No. So, and I was thinking about it. I was like, dude, my mind just opened up. It's true. I've, I've never actually been to the sun before. So 
it probably isn't even a thing. So you guys are really believing into the system. And, and, and Jesse's like, dude, like you can see it in the sky. And, and like, if you look at it for too long, your, your eyes hurt. And like, if you're in the sun for too long, your skin burns. Like it, it definitely is there, man. And then this, like the Gen Z kid looks at Jesse and he's like, dude, don't tell me you're falling for the disinformation. It's probably like a government thing. And, and Jesse's looking at this kid like, what, your, your best response to me saying you can see it and like it hurts your eyes and your skin. The best response to that, which is totally logical, is it's probably a government dot dot thing question mark. What? Like, dude, I thought you said the government, like the sun wasn't even real. And uh, so the teacher kind of steps in and is like, hey, like Gen Z kid, the sun is real. It's like, you can even see it. I, I don't know where you saw this video on TikTok or whatever that kids are on, right? But that's not true. The sun is real. <laughs> trust me. And, you know, the Gen Z kid's like, dude, why should I trust you? Like, you're definitely in bed with the government and because uh, of this teaching gig where you're making all this money to spread disinformation. And the teacher's just looking at this kid like, bro, you think I became a teacher for the money? And the teacher starts laughing because if you guys don't know, Teachers do a really important job, but they are definitely not compensated that well. You do not go into teaching because you're trying to make some fat stacks. Not a single person would do that unless they had no idea, unless they knew literally nothing about teaching and especially teaching compensation, would they ever go into teaching to make money, right? So the teacher's like, look, I survive, but I definitely am not making money. And I'm definitely also not paid by the government to spread disinformation. And the, the, the Gen Z kid's like, all right, guys, that's enough of this nonsense. And he stands up and he's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm calling it right now. We have a max, mass exodus from this class. Anyone who believes the sun is fake, get up right now and walk out of this class so that the truth can be heard. And the kid gets up. And the Gen Z kid legitimately looks around the classroom expecting like every single kid to rise up and be like, yeah, man, you're right. The sun is not real at all, dude. I believe in you. You're saying what's right. But uh, what actually ended up happening was every single kid, including Jesse, just stayed in their seat. It was almost as if they were sitting harder than usual, whatever that means. They were just emphasizing that they were sitting. It was like sitting with an exclamation point, not a period. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. But they were all just looking at this kid like, dude, you're freaking embarrassing yourself right now, man. Like, what are you saying, dude? And the kid's like, so you're all part of the system and believe in the sun. You know what? I'm going to take my truth with me. And, and if you realize the truth someday, well, it's too late for you. Goodbye. And the kid legitimately gets up and walks out of the classroom. So basically, uh, the teacher had to go find him outside of class and have a little discussion about him, about, you know, he can believe what he wants and he can do what, think what he wants, right? But he can't disrupt the classroom. And, you know, the teacher, like he showed the teacher the video and apparently the teacher was almost immediately able to like point out the logical fallacies. And eventually the kid's like, okay, I guess I concede that maybe the sun is real. And I guess I concede that perhaps you're not paid hundreds of millions of dollars by secret government agents to spread disinformation. Cause like the teacher showed him his car and it's like, this is not what I buy if I had a hundred billion dollars. And yeah, so eventually the kid came back to class the next day. Um, he was kind of known as the son is fake kid for a while, but eventually kind of blew over. And if you thought that that Gen Z kid was crazy, you're not even ready for the next one. Cause we're going to call the subscriber who submitted that one, James. So anyways, right, uh, there's a kid in James's class who is the very typical Gen Z Twitter type person where, like, I, I don't know, it's almost like a professional sport to try and become offended by everything. And let me just set the record clear, like, there are things that people should be genuinely offended by. Like, it is totally understandable if someone does something or says something that is completely out of pocket. Like, there are instances, right? And also, maybe someone does something they don't even mean to be, like, disrespectful, right? It's better to let them know in a respectful tone that they're being disrespectful by doing X so that they don't disrespect someone else. It's good to do that, right? However, there are also people, especially Gen Z people, that almost take this, like, 
as a lifelong crusade to find a problem with everything and to minimize or to maximize every small speck into, well, what if this and then that and then this and then that and then this and then that. And I think that's offensive now. So this kid uh, kind of took that to the extreme. And we're going to call this kid the Gen Z kid. So anyways, James was in class with this kid. And this kid was kind of just known for being a little weird, for just being a little strange, right? Um, so one day he comes into class and he tells the teacher that he today is protesting the class. And the teacher looks at him and is like, dude, oh my God, what? He's a, and the, so the teacher's like, okay, um, can you at least tell me why you're protesting the class today? Like, can you let me know why you're protesting the class? Like, can you inform, can you enlighten me a little bit? And the kid was like, yeah. So you know what? I prefer to sit on the ground. I was thinking about this and I like lying on the ground when I'm at home. It is easier for me to do my homework. It's better for my digestion. I prefer to sit on the ground. And there are no options for me to do so in this classroom. All the tables have chairs on them for the people who enjoy sitting. But my preferences of laying on the ground are not being accommodated, which I find extremely offensive. So I am protesting this class until this gets fixed. And dude, like James was in class and he was just like, dude, what? So everyone was sitting there just like, bro, Twitter is a person's going crazy again. Like what's going on now? And they're listening in and like James turns to his friend. He's like, this gotta be a bit, right? Like this gotta be a big practical joke. And they check the calendar and it wasn't April 1st. They're like, oh my God. It's like August 28th or like October 24th. It's not April 1st. What's going on? Yeah, so sure enough, um, the teacher is kind of really like weirded out by this, but they're also like, okay. The teacher realizes that they can't just like snap on this kid and kind of like be realistic with them. Like they have to, they cave a little bit, but they're just trying to be, they're just trying to deescalate the situation. So the teacher's like, okay, um, I really don't think you should uh, protest the class. Uh, I can definitely see if there's like a rug or something in the, uh, I don't know, the closet, if you really wanted to lay on it. Like, you could do that if you really wanted to. Like, uh, you could also just lay on the ground. And the, the Gen Z kid is like, what? Lay on the ground? And which is just like, I don't know why they were so like, like, like wow, that's insane. Because didn't they just say that they like laying on the ground at, at home? But sure enough, they're like, I want something built for me to lay on. Which is like, bro, the whole point of laying on the ground is you're laying on the ground. You're not laying on your bed. Basically, what this kid ended up like, because at this point, James is starting to realize that all this kid was saying was that they don't prefer to lay on the ground. They prefer to lay on a bed. And the fact that the school didn't have like 28 beds in a classroom for all the kids to lay on is, like, oh, no, that's that's bad, man. Because, oh, yeah, if kids are not allowed to lay in their beds in class. Oh, no, good heavens, dude. They have to sit in a seat. You have to sit in a chair like everyone else? Oh, no. Yeah, so the teacher starts to catch on, too. And it's like, um, no. Like, you can lay on the ground if you want, but I can't do anything beyond that. And the kid, the Gen Z kid, is like, starts laughing. And everyone in the class is like, uh, did they just, like, did a screw literally just fall out of their head? Like, what's going on right now? Why is this kid laughing? So the kid's laughing. And the kid's like, oh, Mr. Teacher, you just made a huge mistake. You don't know what you just did. I'm going to go to the front office and I'm going to say that you were discriminating against my preferences and you're going to get fired. And then the kid laughs again. And James, this turns to his friend like, for a second, James is like, wait, could they actually do that? But yeah, so sure enough, the Gen Z kid storms out of class. Um, the teacher didn't look that concerned because I think the teacher realized that he probably couldn't be, probably, right, probably, probably couldn't be fired um, because a kid uh, was mad that they didn't have a bed in class for them to lay on. Most likely that was not going to result in him getting booted from his like 10 year long position at like this, I, I don't know, look, unlikely. So the, the anyways, the Gen Z kid marches up to the front office and uh, so, I mean, James doesn't know exactly what happened, but he heard bits and pieces and can assume what happened because, you know, he wasn't, like, there in the office with them. But uh, anyways, um, 
sure enough, Gen Z, a Gen Z girl or whatever, right? Gen Z kid goes up to the front office, demands to speak with the principal, uh, has to wait like 20 minutes because like law and order, right? The principal has other things that they need to do. Tells it to the principal about the horrors of not having a bed personally set aside for them and how that's what they want to do. And when the teacher didn't like uh, cave to the fact that they wanted a bed in class, that that they must be fired because that is her preference. She wants to sleep in a bed. And uh, the principal, like, I, I think the te- I think the principal knew that like the principal had a bit more power in the situation than a teacher does. So the principal kind of gave it to her straight and was like, "Dude, no, the real world, right?" is not going to cave to every single preference you have. It's not going to do everything you want to. If every kid has to sit in a seat, then every kid has to sit in a seat. Just, like, think logistically for a second what it would be like if we got 20 beds in a classroom. First of all, a lot of kids, like, what if they wanted to have seats? And then you'd have to have seats and beds. Also, beds are not conducive to good studying. And just a lot of stuff like that. And, yeah, the Gen Z girl had to come into class the next day, completely defeated, and it was a little embarrassing for her. If you thought that those Gen Z kids were bad, this final one is like the pinnacle of Gen Z. So anyways, we're gonna call a subscriber who submitted the story Ash. Uh, you guys catch, catch the pattern so far? Jesse, James, Ash, OG Pokemon people, you know what that is? I haven't watched Pokemon forever, but I used to as a kid. Anyways, so there's a kid in his class who we're gonna call the Gen Z kid. So this kid, um, he had a TikTok account and he posted a video of his dog doing something and it got like 50,000 views. And that sounds really good and 50,000 views is really cool. Um, I mean, I'd be happy if I got 50,000 on TikTok. That sounds pretty good. But at the end of the day, some stuff on TikTok will just randomly go viral and uh, it's not as if he gained like 10,000 followers who follow him because of his dog and he can make a branded account out of his dog, right? Like build a, like a brand around that because like Doug the Pug and some other, there are like legitimate brands built around dogs. Um, but no, he just had a random video, got 50K and this kid, the Gen Z kid, believed that he now was gonna become a TikTok celebrity and drop out to pursue his quote unquote passion of TikTok. Like bro, what? Real quick, comment. Gen Z if you made it this far to the video. And also check us out on Spotify. It will be in the pinned comment down below. You can listen to these as podcasts on there. And it helps me out if you do. Anyways, so sure enough, um, this kid started going around telling everyone that it was so great to get to know them. And remember, they're in sixth grade or whatever, that it was so great to get to know them that when he was rich, famous, successful, and had a six-pack, 12-pack body abs movie star type lifestyle, right? Living with his laptop on a jet, on a plane, on a boat, on a mansion, that you know what? He would, he would, he would remember them. And if they were lucky enough that they could stay at his uh, mega yacht mansion boat jet, uh, super cool Cobra sort, I, I don't even know at this point. Anyways, he was go- basically, he was going around telling people that he came to the conclusion that he was going to drop out to pursue TikTok, which, look, I'm actually not 100% against people really, like, honing in on their skills. If they, get, if they get a shot of virality on a social media platform, I don't suggest dropping out unless you have a very scalable, sustainable, six, seven-figure income from that stuff because it can go away insanely fast. But I do actually suggest if you get a short burst of attention on a social media platform, I am all for you digging in and trying to build something out of that that maybe can turn into something bigger. But that's a more serious discussion for a different platform at a different time. I do not suggest you drop out of school because one of your TikTok videos goes viral by accident and you gain no traction from it. So people were immediately telling the kids, like, oh, wait, why are you dropping out? Like, do you have an account we don't know about? And he's like, no, look at this. And he, like, pulls out his phone. And he shows them the video. And the video is, is, has like 52,000 views, which is cool. But dude, first of all, that's only 52,000 views. Which, look, I remember the days when I'd be happy with 30 views. But we're talking about dropping out of school. 52,000 views is nothing. And second of all, it's on TikTok with short form content, which is way easier to get views on. I don't know how. I haven't been able to, and I've tried a bit. But just generally... Much easier to. So, yeah, eventually he comes up to Ash, gives the whole steal of like, oh man, I'm gonna be so rich and I'm dropping out because I'm gonna be a TikToker. And Ash kind of like tells him straight up, like, dude, I don't think you should do that. 
Like, I get it. Like, you had a video do well, which, like, you totally could have the time to... And also, they're in sixth grade. It's not like... You still... I think you still, like, legally need to be in school at that point. It's like, dude, like, first of all, I don't even know if you can drop out of school. Second of all, why can't you just do both? Like, I really, like, think you could put in the time for both doing both. Um, and also, look, this, this video going viral is cool and all. Like, congratulations, man. But this isn't enough to really stand on alone. Like, this really isn't as impressive as maybe you may think it is. And, you know, the TikTok kid immediately when he hears this is like, dude, you're just jealous of my success on this platform. Like, you're just jealous that you're not going to be able to drop out of school and live the laptop luxury safari uh, mega jet uh, 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 victory yacht mansion lifestyle that I'm going to. And uh, Ash is like, or Ash is like, all right, bro, like, cool, live your life. And so, yeah, actually, this kid stopped showing up to class entirely because Ash had one or two classes with them. And Ash was really surprised because he was sure that this kid, because this kid is, had been known for like telling lies a lot, telling tall tales, and all this kind of time, all this type of stuff, right? But he never actually expected this kid was gonna follow through with oh, I'm going to drop out to pursue TikTok. First of all, because you can't even drop out in sixth grade. Uh, you'd have to become, like, homeschooled, and that's not even really dropping out. This is taking, you know, being homeschooled, right? So, sure enough, this kid had told nobody, but he stopped attending classes to pursue TikTok. And in all fairness, this kid was posting a lot of videos on TikTok, right? But one thing that you'll learn when you, if you ever try to make, like, content or whatever is you kind of need to stick to the same niche, or maybe not the same, you need to have uh, con like a continuous theme in your content, because people will follow you to get something, right? They, they want to be entertained or informed or something. If I started making random vlogs and then cooking videos in the math tutorials alongside my stories, they wouldn't perform well because people came to me for my stories, for the commentary, whatever you guys came to me for, right? So this kid was posting like 12 times a day and he was posting like random vlogs. He's like, hey guys, dropping out of school vlog, episode one. And then he'd be like, hey guys, so this is me playing video games. And they'd be like, hey guys. And they all like, all the views was like 20 views, 40 views, which is whatever. And it's fine. And if you're just doing TikTok for fun, who cares how many views you get? I don't care if you get zero views, man. Like you did something for fun. But this kid was doing it because he dropped out. Yeah, so he didn't actually drop out. All he did was he stopped attending classes. So after a couple days of not attending classes, this kid's parents got a message from the school being like, kid's about to be on probation. He's not, he's like dropping out of all, he's not attending classes. Has he been home? Like, you guys got to let us know if he's sick or he's not coming in. And the parents obviously freaked out and they confronted the kid. And the kid's like, I was pursuing my business endeavors, which... Posting to, like, 12 people on TikTok is not a business endeavor. If you have, like, millions of people and you're able to convert that to a product or maybe convert other people to someone else's product and make a commission off of that, then fair enough. That is a business, right? However, this is not a business. And his parents were like, dude, you can't just not show up to class too. Like, what? So, yeah, after this kid, the Gen Z kid, was talking all this smack about how he's going to live his uh, laptop luxury lifestyle to everyone. Within two days, he's back in classes. And uh, I think Ash tells me that at least most people were cool about it. Like, they weren't going to taunt this kid because whatever. Like, it's just not worth the energy. But apparently one kid actually did go up to him and be like, Yo, dude, did you drive in today in your Lamborghini Bugatti? Like, what color is your Bugatti, bro? Like, I'm actually really excited to see it. I mean, I know you're still here, but... Did you, like, chart in on your super yacht or something? Like, dude, where's your Bugatti? Yeah, he was, like, messing with the kid or whatever. But other than that, it just goes to show, dude, Gen Z kids, I'm a Gen Z kid, technically. Guys, don't believe everything on the internet, for the love of God. Oh, my God. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it.
How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a good day. Today we got three stories of Minecraft kids that I know you will enjoy. So let's just go ahead and jump into the first one. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Peter. And by the way, all these stories are on Spotify linked in the description. You'll probably even hear them about an hour earlier before they go up on here if you find them on Spotify. Anyways, so Pete, we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted this story Peter. And anyways, right, Peter was in a class and in Peter's class, there was an assignment that they all had to do. And this assignment was the what do you want to do when you grow up assignment. And you got kids coming in being like, oh, I want to do YouTube. Oh, I want to be a doctor. Oh, I want to be president of the United States. Oh, I want to do your mom. There's like a lot of things that people came in and said like, oh, this is what I want to do, right? So it was kind of like done that you had a presentation, you would uh, go home and kind of prepare a little bit and then you go up there. I think a couple stories ago, someone else submitted something with uh, their class had a similar type thing. And I know I had something like this. So this might just be a thing that happens to everyone in like second grade. I don't know. Tell me in the comments if it's true or not. But anyways, right, so sure enough, you know, Peter wanted to be, he wanted to be a doctor, which is pretty standard, at, like pretty standard response. When I was 10, I wanted to be a doctor, and then I learned about medical school. But anyways, right, so, you know, Peter, you know, has this little thing, he wants to be a doctor or whatever, and eventually, let's just skip forward to the day of class, let's just skip forward to the day where, you know, they're actually presenting, and, uh, you know, Peter goes up there, he has a doctor's costume he bought or whatever, and, uh, you know, sure enough, it's fine, it's whatever. That's not the interesting thing. There's a kid in Peter's class who we're gonna call the Minecraft kid because all, all, all bro does is play Minecraft. Like literally every, every single day when he gets back from school, doesn't even do his homework, screw that, does Minecraft. In class, he's asleep so he can stay up all night to play Minecraft. This bro's life literally revolves around Minecraft. Don't get me wrong, Minecraft is a cool game. I use it for all my background footage. It has a integral place in my childhood. Like, I love Minecraft. Great game, right? However, please have a life outside of it. That, that, that's all I ask. That's all I ask, man. But anyways, right, sure enough, the Minecraft kid walks up to the front of the class. And uh, everyone was kind of expecting him to say, like, I don't know. I want to, uh, I don't know, work for a video game company. I want to work for Mojang. I want to be a computer pro programmer so I can make video games or whatever. Or maybe even, like, I want to stream on Twitch, which is, like, even that's a little, that's a little iffy. Which, you don't even want me to go into the statistics of how difficult that is. Anyways, and I won't, because I want watch time and good retention. So sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid goes up there, and Peter's kind of interested to see what he's going to say, because he's kind of expecting the Minecraft kid to say something a little bit goofy. Like, not too crazy, but just a little bit goofy. Just a little bit on the goofy side, right? And the Minecraft kid goes up there and says... You know, all I want to do when I grow up is just keep playing Minecraft. And he brings with him, like, you know that, like, fake, you know, Minecraft sword, like a foam one that, like, you can buy for, like, $20 or something? I just, I just know it because I got it for my fifth grade birthday party, and I might still have it, or I might have had my mom thrown it out without me knowing, which is a shame, but whatever, right? And so he brings this, and he kind of swings it around. It's like, yep, all I do every day is I play Minecraft. When I go home, I go home and I play Minecraft. And I stay up all night to do it. That's why I'm never paying attention in class or doing anything like that. You know, and I want to let you know that no one can tell me otherwise. All I'm going to do with my life is play Minecraft every single day. And the teacher's like, hey, I, like this wasn't, this project wasn't about, you know, what's your favorite hobby? What's your favorite pastime? This project was about like, what are you gonna do with the rest of your life? Or what do you want to do as a profession? There's a difference between, you know, choosing to do something casually and choosing to do something professionally. And the thing is, right, this wasn't even a teacher who's like, if you're not a doctor or a lawyer, then you're not a real worker. Like it wasn't one of these like old fashioned teachers who doesn't understand like new, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like a teacher that doesn't understand kind of the new scheme of jobs. The teacher literally let a kid say, hey, I want to be a YouTuber, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to go to college to for digital marketing or something like that. The teacher was fine with that. The teacher understands the new landscape of work. But the thing is, there's a difference between saying, between saying, hey, I want to pursue playing video games online, and if that doesn't work, then I want to do X, and saying, I want to sit inside and do video games all day, specifically Minecraft all day. Because, bro, let me just let you know, there's really no professional Minecraft leagues that pay you anything, right? There, I, I might be wrong. There might be like a professional Minecraft league that pays you like a couple hundred bucks if you win a tournament. 
But dude, that's not enough to sustain yourself. Like there are no, like maybe, maybe if you wanted to say, yeah, I want to be professional, like Counter-Strike or a game like that, maybe. But even that is a massive stretch. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid didn't even say anything like that. He just said, I want to sit inside and play Minecraft all day. So Peter's just like, oh boy, because Peter's sitting down. He's watching the teacher really just like not be cool with this. And the Minecraft kid not even like adapting on the spot. Because one might have thought that, okay, the Minecraft kid realizes that the teacher is not a fan of what he just said. And that maybe if he wants to save his grade, I don't know, adapt it a little bit. Like just switch things up a little bit. I, I, I don't know, man. Like... Just be like, oh, haha, what I meant is I want to go and learn how to make video games. Like, sure, that's fine. Go to school for programming or something like that. But the Minecraft kid doubles down and says to the teacher, you know, what I want to do when I grow up is I just want to sit at home and do video games. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want anyone to bother me. And I just want to play Minecraft 24-7. And, you know, Peter's just like, oh, boy, this teacher's not going to be happy. And the teacher's like, like, Minecraft kid. Says his actual name, but it's like, Minecraft kid. I want you to know that, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, sit back down, step outside, and I'm going to give you 10 minutes to come up with a real job. Like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, and I'm being very gracious right now, because at the moment, you have a fail on this assignment. Not like the Minecraft kid was really caring about his grades. I mean, he handed in zero homework and basically was failing everything else. But the teacher's like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of standing outside to come up with something new. And when you're ready, come back in and you may present again. So the Minecraft kid very angrily like walks outside. And the teacher's like, all right, who's coming up next? And the teacher's like, okay, Ben, how about you come up? And within 10 seconds, the door slams open again. And the Minecraft kid says, I'm ready. So the teacher, I don't know if the teacher was just being hopeful because... I mean, come on, he was out for like three seconds. You really think he came up with a new job? No. The teacher might have just been hopeful and was like, oh, that was fast, sure. Come on up, like, wh what's what's the deal? Like, what's going on? And like, come tell me about your new job. So Minecraft Kid walks to the front of the class again and says, when I go get grow older or when I'm an adult, I just want to sit inside and do Minecraft all day. I said it before and I'm saying it again, boom. The teacher's like kind of turns to the Minecraft Kid and says, I was generous with you. Like, I gave you time to reconsider what you're doing. Like, to, to pr present again. Like, this isn't just what you want to do. This is like a presentation. This is an assignment for the front of the class. And at this point, the Minecraft kid says, so you're saying I can't do that? And the teacher's like, yes. I'm saying that when you're older, you're not going to be able to do that. Sure, you can play video games on, like, in, on the part. Like, you can, play, you can partially play video games. That's totally fine. But you can't entirely play video games. You've got to do other stuff with your life as well. You have to find something that's going to bring you an income. You have to do something more productive than that. And, you know, the Minecraft teacher, uh, the Minecraft teacher, sorry, I'm jumbling my words. The teacher probably would have even been fine if he said, I want to, you know, play my, I want to make content around me playing Minecraft. The teacher was in tune with, you know, you can entertain, like entertainment is decentralized. Almost anyone can make entertainment. Not almost ever anyone will be successful, but almost anyone can. This isn't like the 80s and 90s where really you either had to like score a really big role in TV or radio or a movie. You can just post something on your phone. It's incredible. So the, the at this point, the Minecraft kid was starting to get really angry. And he's like, Teacher, I'm going to give you to a count of three to take that back. And the teacher is so taken aback by the fact that the Minecraft kid just said, I'm going to give you a count of three to say to like pretend that you didn't just say what you said. And the teacher's like, are you insane? The Minecraft kid is like, three? And the teacher's like, you don't understand. They're like, I am supposed to be the one giving you a countdown. Minecraft kid's like, two? And the teacher's like, like, what is so wrong with me saying that you can't just sit around and play Minecraft all day? Like, that makes total sense. Like, you, I asked you in the presentation what you should do as a job. And you said sit around and play Minecraft. How do you expect to make any money from that? And the Minecraft kid's like, one. The teacher's like, what? What are you going to do at the end of the countdown? And the Minecraft kid steps over and just like kind of like goes down on one knee and is like bent down, is like, it starts making like weird noises She's like and the teacher's like dude what are you doing okay teacher probably didn't say dude but the teacher's like uh 
what are you doing? And the Minecraft kid jumps up, springs up, and is like, you, I will fight you in a 1v1 PvP battle. And he grabs his Minecraft sword and starts, like, swinging it around, trying to be, like, intimidating. But, dude, it was a foam sword. You're playing Minecraft. You're not intimidating anyone, dude. Like, that's just not happening. And he starts swinging around. He's like, wow, 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 wow. And the teacher's like, okay, I just, uh, like, wh wh why? Why? What are you doing? Like, stop. Stop it. Get some help, bro. Like, what's going on? And he's like, you said that I could do Minecraft every single day for the rest of my life. And the teacher's like, yeah, and I, uh, I, I stand by that. Minecraft kid's swinging around his foam swords like, you're trying to, you're, you don't want me to be happy. You want me to be unhappy. And for that reason, it's you versus me in a PvP fight. At this point, Peter is just sitting there just trying to comprehend how everything escalated to this point. Because sure, like the Minecraft kid and the teacher were kind of fighting a bit and they weren't happy with each other. But the Minecraft kid really gave the teacher a 3 to one countdown and then entered into Minecraft PvP mode. He has his like sword out, swinging it all around. And at this point, right, you know, Peter's just like, okay, something's going like this is not going to end well. At this point, right, you know, he's like swinging around his sword. The Minecraft kid's like, I'm going to give you to another count to three to give me a 100% and tell me that I can 100% play Minecraft for the rest of my life. The teacher looks at him and says, no, I would be lying to you if I said that. And Minecraft kid is like, fine, you've chosen your fate. Minecraft kid's like, starts swinging his sword. The teacher says, if that foam sword even touches me for a second, you're failing this assignment and you're going straight to the principal's office. The Minecraft kid says, I will give you another count of three to reconsider it, everything. <laughs> the Minecraft kid is, is obviously realizing at this point that he's in way too deep and he's also not winning. So he thinks that he, if he keeps on saying, I'm going to give you till the count of three, that he is somehow going to win this whole thing. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid counts to three. The teacher's like, okay, like what? What's going to happen now? The Minecraft kid's like, I warned you. Minecraft kid takes his, like, his foam sword, swings, and, and goes, bop, makes contact with the teacher. And at this point, the teacher grabs the sword, rips out of the Minecraft kid's hand, goes over, holds on to both the Minecraft kid's shoulders, and starts walking him out the door. He's like, all right, buddy, uh, that's time to go to the principal's office for you. So the Minecraft kid and the teacher walk out the door, and everyone else is kind of just sitting there like, uh... What? Anyways, next story, we're going to call the subscriber Chris. So Chris has a cousin who we're going to call the Minecraft kid, right? And Chris doesn't really get to know his cousin that well. He doesn't see him that often. But Chris and his mom are over at his aunt's, yeah, it'd be his aunt's house. And, you know, this is the first time, you know, Chris has seen his aunt in years. And the last time Chris saw his cousin, his cousin was like four and didn't, it was really shy, didn't want to talk that much. Now his little cousin was eight years old and was apparently a Minecraft fanatic. He liked playing it so much. He knew everything about it. He watched Minecraft YouTubers when he wasn't playing Minecraft. In his sleep, he dreamed about fighting the Ender Dragon. And, uh, you know, Chris didn't really know that that much, but Chris was kind of told by, because Chris asked his mom, like, as they're driving there, like, what, what, what should I know? Like, I have to hang out with this kid because Chris was told, oh, you get to hang out with your cousin for a little bit. It'll be good for you. Chris is like 16 at this point. He's not going to get along with his cousin on a lot of things. They're not going to have a ton in common. They can't talk about girl troubles at the same level, right? They can't talk about, oh, wow, math is so difficult. Yeah, because Chris's little cousin would be like, yeah, a simple addition really sucks. <laughs> He'd be like, uh, sure. So sure enough, you know, Chris's mom was like, yeah, okay. So all I know is he's a big fan of like that game Minecraft. And Chris is like, yeah, I've played it a little bit. And by Chris saying that he's played it, literally all he means is, yeah, he and his friends have played some like survival servers at some points. Like they'll be really into it for a week and then they'll not play it for a year. That's how a lot of people actually get into it. You get super into Minecraft servers with your friends. You play for two weeks. You literally play 12 hours a day and then you never touch the game again for week, for years. It, that's just how it goes with a lot of people. So Chris and his mom get there and Chris's aunt and Chris's cousin, right? Chris's cousin is actually in a different room, but Chris's aunt greets them. They're like, oh my God, I haven't seen you so long, Chris. You're so much older now. And Chris is in his head is like, yeah, that's kind of how time works, bro. But whatever, right? Sure enough, you know, Chris's aunt was like, hey, Chris, I just want to let you know your little cousin's in the other room and he would love to see you. Did he actually love to see him? Well, I mean, we'll see him in a second. 
So sure enough, you know, Chris goes into the other room and there's the little cousin who's sitting there with an iPad and he's playing, you know, Pocket Edition Minecraft. And Chris is like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, hey, it's me, Chris. I don't remember if you remember me, but I'm your cousin. And Chris's little cousin's like, yeah, I don't, like, hi, how are you doing? And Chris is like, oh, I heard you like Minecraft. And, you know, Chris's little cousin's like, I do. Do you like Minecraft? And Chris in his head is like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to say yes, we're going to bond, and this will be less awkward. So Chris is like, yeah, yeah, I like Minecraft. It's, it's cool. Like, I, I enjoy it. And Chris's little, bro, Chris's little uh, cousin immediately says, so you're an expert? And Chris is like, I don't know, but I played a little bit. And Chris is like, okay, well, riddle me this. So, uh, well, well, when, when you kill the Ender Dragon and there's the Ender Dragon egg, how exactly are you to get it? And uh, Chris, who's never actually completed the game because he just plays a little bit, right? He's like, oh, you just mine it, right, with a pickaxe. The little cousin's like, meh, wrong, one strike against you. Next question. And Chris is kind of thinking, wait, what? Like, is this some kind of like, well, like, what are we doing here? And, you know, the, the little cousin's like, okay, so if you're fighting an Enderman and you have a bucket, like, what will, a bucket of what, like, what kind of liquid will Enderman not be able to, like, fight you in? And uh, Chris is like, I don't know, um, milk, because he remembered he was able to milk a cow. And Chris's little cousin's like, oh, my God, meh, 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 wrong. Water. Enderman will not fight you in water. I, two strikes, Chris, two strikes. And Chris is kind of like, oh my god, like this was, this was supposed to be a bonding experience. This is the opposite of a bonding experience right now. Like this is not a bonding experience. This is crazy. And sure enough, you know, Chris is like, okay, man, well, I can play Minecraft with you. He's like, man, final question. And I need you to answer this. And Chris is like, uh, okay. And so this little cousin's like, well, I need to think about it. I got to make it good. And, you know, you're going to suffer the consequences if you don't, like, if you don't finish, if you don't get this question correct. So the little cousin's like, okay, who is the popular Minecraft YouTuber who has the Minecraft Manhunt series and is green? And the thing is, right, Chris kind of grew up on, you know, the old school Minecrafters. So he was like, uh... Captain Sparkles, and his little brother's like, no, it's Dream, you idiot. You aren't actually a Minecraft fan. You lied to me. And at this point, Chris is like, dude, it's not simply not that deep. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, you betrayed my trust. And the Minecraft kid runs over to him and sinks his teeth into his arm. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And I'll just, it'll help me know how many people actually made it to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it when you guys comment the secret word down below so I can see all the names and faces. And if you want to support the channel, just continue watching more videos after this one. Literally just watching more videos supports the channel more than you can ever imagine. And also, it's on Spotify. And if you do watch and listen on Spotify, please rate five stars. And if you want to submit your own stories of Karen, Spoiled Kids... Uh, I don't know, Minecraft kids, crazy things happening in high school, submit them to either my Twitter or Instagram. You can do so by following me on those platforms and then DMing me on there. Uh, by the way, join the Discord server, link in description. Use code CONNORPUGS for 10% off gamer subs. Helps you, helps me. And let's get right back into it. So Chris looks down at his little cousin who has bit him at this point. The little cousin has sunk his teeth into Chris's skin. Thankfully, he doesn't break it and draws blood or anything. And he's just looking at it. He's like, oh, my God. And, like, he shakes him off. He's like, dude. And the little cousin's like, well, that's your punishment for not actually enjoying Minecraft. You're a fraud, a phony, and a, a, a fake lover of Minecraft. You don't actually love Minecraft. You're a fraud, and that's your punishment. So Chris very angrily walks out. And like, you know, the, the, uh, Chris's mom and his, his Chris's aunt are looking like, oh, what just happened? And Chris is like, like my, like my little cousin, like just bit me because he says I'm a fraud, <laughs> fraud alert, fraud owned. But he's like, you know, he's like, he thinks I'm a fraud. Cause I didn't understand all this, like really obscure trivia about Minecraft. Like, can you believe this? 
Like, this is ridiculous. Oh, my God. And at this point, you know, you know, Chris's mom's like, oh, no. And Chris's aunt's like, oh, I forgot to say he's really touchy about the Minecraft subject. And Chris's mom turns to Chris's aunt and is like, you told me that's what he really liked. And Chris's aunt goes on to say, well, yeah, he really likes it, but he takes it really seriously. And if you say you like Minecraft, he assumes that you like it at his level. And he's had so many people before say that they like Minecraft but they just like it casually, that he now thinks that, well, he now thinks that anyone who says that and doesn't know all the obscure trivia that he knows is a fakester, a fraud, or a phony. At this point, you know, Chris is kind of just like, well, why didn't you tell me this before? And you could hear the little cousin screaming, get that fraud out of here, mom. I don't want to hang out with that fraud. And sure enough, Chris's aunt goes into that room and you hear her say like, you better behave yourself. This is unacceptable behavior. You hear me? This behavior is unacceptable, and I, I won't stand for it. I simply won't stand for this. You you don't see your you only see your cousin like once a year. This is insane. And Chris is kind of just listening to this, and Chris's mom's like, Chris, I'm so sorry. I did not know. And Chris is like, it's fine. Like, how would you know? Like, I don't know anyone else who does this. Like, I, I simply could not blame you even if I wanted to. Like, the situation going down right now, it's just so ridiculous. Like, I, I, I just can't blame you at this point. And so Chris's aunt comes back out and it's like, once again, I am so sorry. Like, none of this was ever supposed to happen. Like, you know what? You can go back in there. And he said they just calmed down. And Chris kind of just looks at his aunt. It's like, he said that? And Chris's aunt's like, well, I mean, he implied that with his actions. Basically, just meant Chris's aunt went in there and kind of like shouted at him till he quieted down. And, uh, you know, sure enough, Chris decides, okay, I'll go back in there. And he, when Chris walks back in, he's like, hey, dude. And, you know, his cousin, the Minecraft kid, is just on the iPad. And, you know, he walks in a little bit. And uh, Chris is like, so, playing some Minecraft? And the little cousin's like, not like you would know. And Chris is like, well, okay, when I said I liked Minecraft, I literally just meant I played a little bit with my friends. I think it's a fun game. And the little cousin's like, if you thought it was a fun game, then you would have known my trivia. And uh, Chris is like, well, not necessarily. Like, just because I don't know every detail about the game doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the game. Like, that just doesn't sound fair to me. And Chris is like, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I enjoy playing with my friends. Doesn't mean I don't watch it on YouTube, so... That trivia question about knowing that guy, like, doesn't care, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I really don't understand why you bit me. And, you know, the little cousin is just, like, playing his Minecraft, but then he pauses his game. So, you know, it's about to get real serious, right? And he closes out his iPad. He's like, I bit you because you're a fraud. You're a fraud who says he likes Minecraft, but really doesn't. Little kid turns around, jumps, and bites Chris on the other arm. And Chris is like, oh my God, pushes him off again. Chris st storms out of that room and goes over and is like, mom, he bit me again. And Chris's mom's like, oh dear. And his aunt's like, oh. Chris's aunt runs back into the room, shouts at the Minecraft kid again, and shuts the door. And it's like, Chris, you know what? I haven't seen you in a while. How about you stay out here with your mom and I, and we'll just have a discussion here. You and your cousin can, um, you guys can uh, meet each other again, maybe in a couple of years, when he's out of this phase. Hopefully this is a phase. I really hope this is a phase. So the final Minecraft story, Minecraft kid story, we're going to call the subscriber who submitted it, Bart. Because if you couldn't tell, I got Peter, Chris, and uh, Bart, you know, Family Guy, Simpsons. I'm trying to do themes with these names now. Just keep me and myself interested. Anyways, though, right? So, uh, you know, Bart was in class, and he was in third grade at the time. He was younger on the younger side for sure. I don't know exactly what grade. This could have well been second grade, but let's just say third grade for the just because. And so what they were supposed to do is they were assigned that, you know, they had they could choose any country in the world and they got to decide um, they would have to research it, make a little presentation and eventually present it in front of the entire class. So uh, there was a kid in class who we're just going to call the Minecraft kid. He wasn't even that obsessed with Minecraft. He just really enjoyed the game. And it gets interesting because the Minecraft kid, um, he chose he mixed up basically right he mixed up the nether, the nether, like in Minecraft, and the netherlands, like the place. So anyways, right, it's the day that they're presenting. 
Bart is sitting next to the the, the Minecraft kid, and he leans over and he's like, "Hey, dude, like, what did what? Where did you choose?" And he's like, "Oh, the Nether." And Bart's like, "What? Like, you have to choose a country." And the Minecraft kid's like, "Yeah, it's next to like Sweden, Norway. It's like in that of uh, that part of Europe." And Bart's like, "Oh." Okay, so Bart knows about the Netherlands, right? He just kind of thinks that, you know, the Minecraft kid learned, like, a short, like a shorthand way to call, like, oh, maybe the cool people call the Netherlands the Nether, and I just don't know any better. Um, the thing is, though, so Bart went up, he did his presentation, it was totally fine, but the Minecraft kid, he went up to go do his presentation, and um, uh, the thing is, right, when the Minecraft kid went to go look up, like, the Netherlands, right, he must have written down the Netherlands wrong and wrote down the Nether and maybe couldn't read the rest of it. So when he typed into Google the Nether, he got, like, Minecraft wiki. He got, like, w- he got articles about the in-game Minecraft universe, the Nether. And, and he actually ended up, because, look, he's in second or third grade, you know, reality and uh, fiction is kind of a blurred line for kids at that point. So he went up there and he did an entire presentation talking about like, here's photos. And he literally took screenshots from like a really good texture pack of the nether. He's like, up here, like this far up into Europe, he's like, it's really fiery. It's, uh, there's these floating fire monsters. <laughs> there's these, like, pig creatures that come after you if you provoke them. And the entire class, like, is just looking at him like, uh, bro. And the teacher just has this smile on his face, like, okay, how are we going to handle this, boys? Like, how are we going to go about this? And, you know, the subscriber, or not the subscriber, the Minecraft kid finishes up his presentation. And, uh, you know, everyone is kind of clapping a little bit. And there's, for every single person, there's a point where people can ask questions. A lot of the times, like, the kids would be like, I don't know. Like, if it's not my presentation, I don't know it. Um, but one of the kids raised his hand, and, you know, the Minecraft kid pointed on him. And, you know, he said, um, like, nice presentation, but I'm pretty sure the nether isn't real. And the Minecraft kid starts laughing. He's like, what do, what do you mean the Minecraft, the nether isn't real? And he's like, um, I, I don't think you, uh... I don't think you put down the name right. And the Minecraft kid is really confused, and he turns to his teacher. And the teacher is like, oh, okay, I gotta speak up. The teacher's like, yeah, so, Minecraft kid, I hate to say it, but I think you wrote down the name wrong. I, I was looking it up while you were doing your presentation, because I was pretty confused. And I looked up the nether into Google, and apparently it's a place in a video game. Uh, you were supposed to do the Netherlands. And the Minecraft kid got super embarrassed because he has this whole presentation. He was 100% confident that this place really existed. And he was kind of just told that, oh, well, actually, truth is, you just messed up the whole thing. But the teacher actually was a pretty cool dude because the teacher wanted to say, like, man, like, he's like, hey, all I asked you to do was to do a presentation, you know, on a place that, you know, I thought that, you know, to do a a presentation, do the work do the research, put it together, and present it to the class. He said, hey, you did the research. I can tell you put in the work. This is a great presentation, and you presented it in front of the entire class. Yes, you didn't do exactly what I asked, but you didn't do do so maliciously, and your intentions were good, and you put in the effort. He said, I'm going to grade you as if you did a real country. And uh, the Minecraft kid was very happy to hear this because he more or less kind of like dodged a bullet there. Because I'm sure the Minecraft kid and Bart especially, like when Bart was sitting there, he was worried for his friend because he was friendly with the Minecraft kid. He was worried that he was going to get like a check minus. Basically, they had check plus check and check minus as their system. They got grades when they were older, but he was afraid he was going to get a check minus or maybe, oh, the teacher wouldn't understand and would call up his parents being like, your son isn't taking this class seriously. When you know the son was taking it seriously. He just didn't understand the instructions. He didn't get the memo, right? And it's cool to see teachers like this really come together and understand understand that, you know, if the intention is good and the work was put in, really that's all that, you know, you're supposed to be doing in school. So the Minecraft kid sat down and he turned over and Bart turned over like, hey man, I'm sorry that I didn't say anything. I honestly thought when you said the nether, you were just doing shorthand for like the Netherlands. I thought that was a nickname or something. And the Minecraft kid's like, you're good, dude. Like, it's totally fine. Like, I should have like known that. 
And, you know, and Bart was like, dude, there's actually a cool presentation. Like, I kind of like Minecraft myself. And, you know, I learned a thing or two about Minecraft. Like, I, if I'm going to speed run the game, I'll think about your presentation. And, you know, the Minecraft kid took that, like, you know, pretty nicely. And he smiled back. And, you know, yeah, after that, you know, the, the Minecraft kid actually got a check plus for his presentation. Because the Minecraft kid put in a check plus worth of work. And most kids got check pluses. Some got checks if they really clearly didn't put in any work. But the majority of kids got check pluses, including the Minecraft kid, who did a presentation on the nether, which I just thought was pretty funny, but also W teacher. 100% W teacher. He gets it. He's the goat. Anyways, if you want to support the channel, keep watching videos after Click this on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a good day, because today we have a pretty crazy story of this Minecraft kid who believes that after playing Minecraft that he needs to go back to his caveman roots. And going back to his caveman roots literally just meant not showering, I guess. And he thinks that this will get him all the ladies. And let me just say that uh, that may or may not be the case, but you'll have to wait and see. So anyways, sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story, Alex. And by the way, my Instagram is in the description. It's also Connor Pugs. Go follow me there, and you can submit stories like this to me on there. I'll get to them when I get to them. And anyways, so Alex was in eighth grade and he had this kid in his class who we're going to call Ben. Yes, we're bringing back the name Ben for random secondary characters. And anyways, right, Ben was like, you know, he wasn't like super into Minecraft. Actually, he knew nothing of Minecraft until like a couple weeks before the story. And that's when he was introduced to the game by one of Alex's friends. Uh, we don't need a name, right? And anyways, right, Ben got super, super into it. Uh, Alex doesn't really know how Ben didn't know what Minecraft was. Like, it wasn't like Alex wasn't, or it wasn't like Ben wasn't on the internet. Like, I think Ben might have heard heard of it but he'd never like he didn't know what it was so when one of alex's friends introduced minecraft to him ben basically disappeared for like two weeks like he went to school and everything but he stopped being on social media disappeared as soon as he could like didn't show up to any anything he was just in his room as for as long as he could playing minecraft and i don't mean like i don't know like parkour servers like this or player versus player servers i mean he was playing like vanilla straight up your traditional minecraft that's all he was doing and he was in love with it and three weeks later he came into school one day and he's like alex buddy I, ha I need to tell you something, a revelation I've come to. And Alex is like, yeah, what's good, dude? And Ben's like, brother, we need to return to the caveman days. I was playing Minecraft a couple days ago, and I came to a realization that we need to return to our caveman roots. And I have started that already. Alex is like, what do you mean by that? And at this time, Alex was, not was noticing quite a pungent aroma coming from Ben, right? You know, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to be mean. He didn't want to be, you know, cruel or anything. But let's just say that, you know, <sighs> Benny old boy was not smelling the greatest. He was kind of, uh, he was, uh, he had this essence, um, this odor, this aroma, some might call it, that uh, wasn't the greatest, to put it the, to put it lightly, right? So, anyways, uh, you know, uh, Alex or Ben goes on to say, "Yeah, so I've been playing Minecraft, and it just it just feels so good. It feels so natural. I mean, yeah, playing a block game feels natural, but whatever. I like Minecraft. I'm not saying it's not, but he goes on to say, and I realized that you know my failures in the lady department. The reason why women don't love me is because I, I'm too much like I'm too much. I'm not like the natural man." And when they see me as the natural caveman, they will instinctively fall in love with me. And, and Alex just looks at Ben. It's like, Ben, uh, I don't know where you're going with this, but I really don't have a good, I don't have a good feeling about this. And Ben's like, Alex, I'm here to convert you to my ways. And Alex is like, what? And he's like, are you trying to like sell me an MLM or something? Like, where are we going with this? And Ben is like, no, 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 Alex, return to the caveman. Return to the caveman, Alex. This is what Steve has taught me. And, and, and Alex is like, Ben, Ben, are you okay? Like, if you need help, like, I, I can help you get it. He's like, no, you need help, man. You don't understand. He said, look, I've returned to my caveman roots, but by not doing any of the, the, the showering that is in our modern day societies, you really think putting chemicals in our hair and rinsing it with fake water Alex is like, 
fake fake water what are you he's like I, these are details these are details alex don't question it it's whatever you don't understand the natural aroma that comes from the human body has been programmed for trillions of years and alex is like i don't think humans have been around for trillions of years and ben's like that's not the point the point is the aroma the natural musk sure you can buy cheap garbage from like i don't know armani or gucci their, their fragrance is terrible they'll destroy the, the the brain cells but the true caveman odor is what steve has taught me and uh alex is like so are you gonna like i don't know spend more time outside get more sunlight exercise, eat, like, not processed stuff, like the caveman too. And Alex is like, whoa, or Ben is like, whoa, Alex, chill out. Let's not go crazy. Let's not go cuckoo banana mode on me, okay, man? Okay, man, is that good? Like, let's not go crazy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dropping everything for this caveman thing, but I am embracing the natural musk. And Alex just looks at him and says, so Ben, you're, you're not really changing anything about what you do besides, besides not showering. That, that's the only difference. And Ben's like, well, no, no, no. It's not just not showering. It's embracing my natural musk, my natural odor. It will instinctively make women love me. And Alex is like, Ben, as your friend, I guess, I, I, I strongly suggest you don't do this. And Ben is like, you know what, Alex? I understand that you're a hater and that's okay. Alex is like, I don't think I'm a hater, but, and Ben's like, silence, look. You know that girl over there, Ava? You know how, you know, the prettiest girl in our class. I've always had a crush on her, and I never had a chance. And Alex is like, well, that's also something that has not changed. And Ben's like, look, I'm going to go up to her, and you're going to see. I'm going to go up to her. I'm going to lift up my arms so my armpits are bare. Let her embrace my natural aroma, my natural odor, and you will see that she will just fall in love with me. I'm going to ask her out. And she's going to say yes. It's not even going to be her saying yes. It's going to be her subconscious breaking through to the surface and convincing her that I am the true man for her. Alex is just looking at Ben. He's like, dude, did playing Minecraft make, make you think this or something? And Ben's like, no, it, it encouraged me to remember my true caveman days. And you know, Alex is like, yeah, okay, that's cool, man. Like, I'm cool with that. Like, you're cool. That's good. Okay, you know, actually, actually, Ben, yes. Let's see it. I will, too, embrace the caveman if Ava goes out with you because you smell bad. And Ben's like, I don't smell bad. I smell natural. If that is bad to your nose, then you have a, you, you have a bad nose. And Ben's like, or uh, 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 Alex is like, uh, all right, I got bad nose. That, that's not great. Um, Ben's like, you'll see. Anyways, next day comes around. And Alex is sitting with his friends and he explains like, yeah, so you know Ben, right? And they're like, yeah, we know Ben. And Alex is like, yeah, so he's, he's doing something crazy. And they're like, well, I don't know what he's been doing, but he's been smelling like garbage recently. And Ben, and Alex is like, it's actually, it's related. You're not going to believe this. He played Minecraft and then he believed he had to go back to the caveman era. Like he had to be a man again. And that doesn't mean working out or, you know, reading. It just means not showering for some reason. It's kind of kind of ridiculous and they're like yeah i mean ben has been smelling a little bit more musty and it kind of smells like spoiled milk at this point but i guess uh, <laughs> i i guess that makes sense now and uh alex goes on to say yeah and you know ava and they're like yeah of course we know ava ask her on our class beauty right 10 on 10 they're like eh. alex is like yeah so ben is gonna ask her out later today they're like he's gonna do what he's gonna do and they're and, and alex is like yeah so ben ben thinks that because he smells like he does, she's gonna instinctively say yes. They're like, dude, this, why did you say yes? Why did you allow him to go on with this? At this point, Alex's friends are like, bro, you're kind of being a bad friend of Ben. And Alex is like, dude, he was so confident. He was being so cocky. And they're like, dude, he's gonna get rejected. And there's a chance he gets rejected really hard and really embarrassingly in front of everyone. Do you want that for him? And look, Alex was not happy with the way that Ben went about explaining or teaching him, quote unquote, the ways of the caveman, a.k.a. no shower, no more, right? 
But at the end of the day, they were still friends, and Alex knew that Ava was not just going to say no, but, you know, she developed a bit of an ego for because she did know that she was, you know, the most beautiful girl in the class, and she could have any guy she wanted. She was not going to be nice about letting him down. She was going to be cruel, she was going to be mean, and she was going to crush him, dude. She was going to freaking crush him. And Alex is like, alright, I gotta find Ben. I need to find him before he asks Ava out. And as Alex was saying that, he hears, or he looks up, and he looks at the table across, because they're sitting at lunch, he looks at the table farthest away, and that's where Ava and her friends were sitting, and Ben was walking up to her table. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment uh, Minecraft down below. And if you want to support the channel, one of the best things you can do is binge watch the videos. And please let me know in the comment section what you're doing while watching these videos. And also, final thing, a bit of a new request I have. If you haven't already done so, if you have a TikTok account, go follow my TikTok. It is Connor Pugs. I have about 7,000 followers on there. Um, I'm reposting clips from here. I'm just trying to reach a new audience on TikTok and hopefully bring them to the family over on here. And if you could just, even just following me in there and occasionally watching my videos, uh, basically no one watches them on there and I need a little bit of traction from you guys to help them reach new people and I really would appreciate it. Anyways, let's get back to the story before I bore you guys. And also if you're gonna buy some gamer sups or any of their stuff, wait about a week. I have a pretty cool surprise coming for you guys. But anyways, enough of teasing that. I can't say too much right now. Anyways, right, so Alex looks over and he notices that Ben is walking to Ava's table. And he's like, oh, oh my God, no, 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 no. This can't be happening. And he goes, and he starts to like walk over and you know the people Alex, Alex was sitting with are like Alex go go he's gonna do it don't let this happen so Alex is basically sprinting over to the table but he doesn't get there in time and he kind of stops he's like no I'm too late so Ben goes up to Ava and goes ahem Ava and Ava looks up and is like yes <laughs> oh my the next part is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard Ben goes up to her and literally lifts up both of his arms. You know how, like, after you run and you're, like, really exhausted, you'll put your arms above your heads to, like, make it easier to breathe, right? Or you're told to do that or whatever, right? That's basically what he did. And you could see Ava's face. Like, first you saw her nose kind of twitch as she was smelling what was going on. And then you saw her eyes water, her face crunch up. And, and you could almost hear, like, the, oh, like, it was a bad smell. It was not good. And Alex is like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm par I'm partially respons- Oh, my God. I'm partially resp- I'm partially responsible, man. This is on me. Anyways, Ben goes on to say, so, Ava, now that, you know, I've let your senses, you know, acclimate themselves, and if you have any primal urges, wink, wink, that are coming up from, you know, the surface that are breaking through, would you like to go on a date? You know what? Let's just skip that. Would you like to be my girlfriend? And Alex is like, in his head, he's like, no, no, Ben, no, Ben, no, no, no. And so sure enough, you know, Ava's just looking at him, blinking, not even responding, not laughing or anything. She's just blinking because she's just so dumbfounded by the, did this kid just... Did this kid just straight up ask me out? Because remember, Ava and Ben, they're not friends. They're not dating each other. They're not close like that. W what? And he also smells terrible. A and Ben is like, uh, if you don't know your answer yet, maybe you'll know it in a second. And Ben literally gets closer to her and like pushes his armpit in her face. And she's like, ew, get away from me. And kind of pushes him back. He's like, looks over at Alex and Ben's like, Yells over, don't worry, Alex. Don't worry. Give it a second. You'll see, man. You'll see. It's crazy. You're not going to believe it. She's going to fall in love with me. And Ava looks up, fall in love with you? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I just know that you're a guy who came over here and is smelling terrible and is pushing his stinky armpits in my face. No, I will not go out with you. And like at this point, everybody in the cafeteria has turned their heads. Everybody has turned their heads and is looking at this because it's a scene. It's a spectacle. I mean, Ben is standing up there with his greased out armpits and Ava, known as the prettiest girl in the class, has just demolished him in front of everyone, uh, spectators of the entire class. At this point, there's an awkward silence because people have stopped speaking. Like they've stopped speaking because they want to hear what's going on. 
And Ben is like, I see. Let me know if you change your mind. And Ava's like, no, I will never change my mind. As I said, she's a little extra, right? And Ben just walks over to Alex. And Alex looks at him. He's like, dude, dude, I, I was trying to come over to tell you not to do it. Like, I'm sorry. This is my fault. Ben's like, bro, this is, this is not your fault. She just needs time to realize. Like, Ben goes on to say that, you know, this is totally part of the plan. He knew that there's a chance that, you know, her, like, primal senses would be stopped by her, like, brain, but it was only a matter of time till like, they break through. And now that he's, like, broken through to the senses through, like, essencing out the stink or whatever, that, like, eventually, within, like, the next 24 hours, she will come to her senses, maybe privately, maybe not publicly, but they will be dating. And Alex is like, dude, you can't seriously think that. And Ben is like, it's my theory. Like, I know it's to be true. You have your opinions, and I have my facts. I'm sorry, I stole that from Baskets. Greatest show ever. Rip Christine Baskets, bro. Brings a tear to my eye. Anyways, um, and so sure enough, next day rolls around. It has been 24 hours. And Alex just goes up to Ben. He's like, yo. Ben's like, yeah, what's up? He's like, hey, did, did she ask you out yet? And he's like, no, it hasn't been 24 hours. Ben looks at his phone, looks at the time. He's like, dude, it's, it's been like 22 hours. And Ben goes on to say, see, you're proving my points. Once again, my facts destroy your opinions. And Alex is like, okay, but I mean, she hasn't asked you out yet. And two hours go by. Alex goes up to him and Ben's like, dude, I don't want to talk about it. Alex is like, that's fine, man. Like, you don't have to prove anything to me. Like, I get it. Alex is like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. Just please go home and take a shower. And sure enough. Ben, while he actually continued to play Minecraft, no longer believed the whole caveman philosophy of you must smell like garbage for women to like you. And uh, that was partially due to the fact that it doesn't work and he has firsthand experience in why it doesn't work. And uh, yeah, him and Ava did not ever date from that point on. Um, it was a pretty bad first impression. By the way, that was a first impression practically. I think they knew of each other beforehand, but yeah. Moral of the story is, don't do that, guys. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're having a great day today, because today we have probably one of the most insane stories about a Minecraft kid to date. I mean, you do not want to miss this, so sit back, relax, uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story, uh, let's call him Dave. So anyways, right, you know, Dave was in the third grade, and in the third grade, like at this time, Minecraft was huge. I mean, Minecraft was really big now, but it was like really, really big back in like 2013, 2014. Dave is quite older, but this is a story from back in his childhood. So anyways, right, you know, one thing that was starting to get pretty big, 2015, 2016, I don't totally know exactly when this story happens, was something called, you know, Minecraft PvP, where basically people would fight each other in Minecraft. And there was this kid in Dave's class who we're going to call Ben, because of course we're going to call him Ben. So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they weren't necessarily best friends, but they started to get to know each other because they both were really into the whole Minecraft. Minecraft player versus player battles and so they would start to like play a little bit you know with each other after school they would go on Minecraft servers and they would fight each other and it was actually quite fun so Dave and Ben started to become friends in class and the thing is though uh, Dave was not friends with Ben after what is about to happen, which is absolutely crazy, but you'll have to wait for that one, right? So anyways, right, you know, Dave and Ben, you know, they're talking at recess. So there's out there, there's a swing set at the school's recess, uh, at the school's recess, at the school's playground. So Dave and, uh, Dave and Ben, they're both on the swings, and, uh, you know, Ben is like, man... I don't know, I really don't like Miss Davenport. So Miss Davenport's gonna be the name of their teacher for their math class. And Dave's like, dude, I know, she's the worst. And Ben's like, bro, like, I wish I could just like spend my entire day getting better at Minecraft PvP, like learning how to like be better, but instead I have to spend all this time learning my times tables, bro. I hate those. Little side note, I hated my times tables because I would be like time to be like, you have to do all these in one minute. I'm terrible under pressure. I did not like those. But anyways, Dave and Ben, you know, they were talking about how they really didn't like, you know, the Minecraft, uh, the Minecraft, the, the, the math they had to do in their class and how they thought that their teacher was like extra, extra mean, even though Dave tells me in retrospect, the teacher was actually super normal. Like she was like, 
honestly just trying to teach them the fundamentals of math that they would need for like the next seven years of schooling. But at that time, Dave and Ben, the Minecraft kid, they just, they just didn't get that. So Dave and Ben decided that, you know what, they were going to pull a prank on their teacher to somehow get more time to play Minecraft. So what they were going to do is they were going to find a way to bring their, like, computers into class and to play Minecraft, like, during class so that they can... Because, like, what they were thinking is Dave and Ben, the Minecraft kid, were like, you know what, I hate math, when am I actually going to use it, but you know what I'm using every day? My Minecraft player versus player battle skills. Oh yeah, baby! So yeah, basically they were thinking to themselves, like, we gotta practice in class because we're wasting all of our time doing math. This is ridiculous. So anyways, they, they conjure up a plan. And the whole plan is that they will, like, put their backpacks on their desk. Because they actually had pretty big desks. And they would also sit all the way in the back of class. And their backpacks would be, like, on the desk enough so that it would be kind of blocking their computers. And they'd whip out their computers... And, you know, they would have their mouses or whatever, and then they would play Minecraft in class, and they just, like, attach the school Wi-Fi. This was so far back then that, like, the school Wi-Fi, like, people, like, the, the administrators in the school didn't even know about, like, how to do, like, Wi-Fi blocking. You know how, like, some, like, when you go to school Wi-Fi, you can't look up certain sites or use certain things? This was back in the day when, like, they didn't even know about this. They're just like, oh, internet connection, cool. Anyone can use it. We don't really care. Uh, I don't know if every school was like this, but at least the, uh, Dave and uh, Ben's school was like this. So anyways, the next day rolls around, and they bring their computers into school. And on, on the way out, Dave's mom was like, oh, honey, why do you have your computer with you? And, uh, you know, Dave was like, um, I need to think quick on the spot. He's like, uh, we need it for class. And Dave's mom's like, oh, cool. So anyways, Dave goes into school. He meets up with Ben before class. He's like, bro, are you ready? And Ben's like, yeah, dude, I got my, you know, I got my PC. I'm ready for this. So they go into class and they both sit in the back of the class. And the teacher's like, all right, class, today we'll be learning about long division. By the way, screw long division. That is the worst thing ever. But anyways, right, so Dave and Ben, you know, they're sitting in the back of class. They pull out their backpacks and they put them on their desk. And the teacher kind of looks over and doesn't think anything of it. She's like, weird. But if you want if you want to have less desk space, then be my guest, bro. Like, that's not on me. That's on you. So whatever. And then Dave and Ben, you know, they pull out their computers and then they pull out their mice and they barely have enough room to fit everything on there. But barely is still is still it. You know, they still have enough room, even if it's barely enough room. So anyways, right. They get their laptops out. They connect to the Wi-Fi. They're in, they're like, all right, this is perfect. So they go on whatever player versus player Minecraft server where they can fight each other and other people. I don't know if it was Hypixel back in the day. I don't know if it was like uh, uh, like a bad lion or whatever. I don't even know. I don't know the history that well. But they go on their server, right? And the thing about like Minecraft PvP, if you don't know, when you fight someone in Minecraft, you normally have like a sword. Normally, I mean, you can have like bow, rod, uh, lava bucket. You can have a lot of stuff. But normally it's sword fighting, and for sword fighting, you need to click. And neither of these kids have auto clickers or anything like this. So they wanted to swing their sword. They needed to click. And the thing is, right, they didn't have some kind of, like, ghost mouse that makes no sounds when you click it, which I, I don't know even if that's a thing, because, like, why would you want that? I, 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 except for this very specific situation, which doesn't come up often. Well, actually, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not typically in class pretending to be, like, hiding behind, like, a backpack, secretly playing Minecraft, ignoring my math schools or my, 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 like, math class or whatever. That doesn't normally happen. But anyways, right, so the thing is, for them to play, they need to be clicking. And remember, this class isn't super loud and rowdy, and no one else is on their computers, and no one else is clicking a mouse. So they don't even really think of this. They're just like, Dave and Ben are just so excited to the fact that they're able to play Minecraft during their math class do they legitimately just start, they get on the server and they go, actually, I have a mouse with me right now. They just start going, they just start like going crazy and they're clicking away and they're fighting people and they're doing pretty well, right? So Dave is super focused right now. He's playing this kid who's actually pretty good and they're, you know, they're really close. They're basically have the same number of hits and he hears Ben whisper, Dave, 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 Dave. And, ben, or, uh, and, and Dave's like, Ben, stop, stop. I'm in the middle of a fight. And that's when the teacher says, then he hears his name again, but he hears Dave. 
and sure enough, it is Miss Davenport. And he looks up and he immediately closes his computer. At this point, like Ben is like, "Oh my god!" And Dave is like, "Uh, hi, Miss Davenport. Uh, how's it going, Miss Davenport? How's it going there? Ha <laughs> What's good, Miss Davenport?" And sure enough, like Miss Davenport's like, "You too. You're coming with me." And they pack their bags, and they walk up to the principal's office, and they get in trouble because you're not supposed to be doing that in class. And, uh, yeah, and the principal, you know, ends up calling their parents. You know, when Dave gets back, Dave's mom's like, you were playing Minecraft. You were playing, like, video games. I don't know if she knew if it was Minecraft exactly. So, you were playing video games in class. You are supposed to be paying attention. Like, you know, this is foundational material for the rest of your, like, the rest of your academic career. Like, you're going to be in college, in college math class, and you're going to be thinking back, why didn't I pay attention to that long division? Bro, I've never done long division, like, since seventh, or since fourth grade, bro. Just a little tip. I mean, learn it, because you need to pass, but I've never used that stuff again. Oh, my God. Anyways, though, Dave is not happy. And, you know, Ben is also not happy. So the next day, you know, while they did get in trouble, they still had their recess privileges. So they went out back to the swing set. And they were, and Ben was like, dude... Dude, Miss Davenport is the worst. And Dave's like, bro, 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 100%. She is the worst. Even though, like, in retrospect, Dave tells me that Miss Davenport was literally just doing her job and that Dave back then and Ben, his friend, were just a bunch of dumb kids. But anyways, at the time, Dave and Ben were like, bro, she is the worst. We need to actually get back at her for what she did to us. Dave's like, bro, what were you thinking? And Ben's like, you know what? Last night, I was just so angry that I was sitting there and I was just trying to come up with something. I was trying to come up with an epic prank that would truly get her. So Dave and Ben end up doing something, which you guys will hear in just a little bit. That is something that I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer. Do not do this. I have personally never done it. And I actually don't know anyone who's done this. And it's also pretty illegal. And it's, it, it's, it's a jerk move. And you should never do something like this. That's just my disclaimer coming from me so I can freely tell the rest of the story. So anyways, on the swing set, Dave and Ben, since they live close to each other and they're allowed to kind of roam around, Ben's like, dude, I figured out exactly where Ms. Davenport lives last night. And Dave's like, bro, what? And, and Ben's like, dude, Miss Davenport, she lives really close to us. Like, she lives like five minutes away. And Dave's like, bro, okay, what do you want me to do with this information? And Ben's like, dude, my mom just bought eggs. And she probably, so much stuff goes in her fridge, she won't notice if she loses some eggs, right? And Ben's like, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And that's when Ben says... You and me, tonight, we're going to go egg our house for what she did to us. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below. That's for the OGs of this channel. If you don't get it, that's all good. But if you've been around for a while, that probably that probably brought you back. But anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment door down below, D-O-O-R, or the thing that like you know you enter a house with or a building with. Uh, I just want to see how many people make this far into the, into the video. And also, if you want to support the channel, literally binge watch these videos. Like, sit down and watch a bunch of story videos in a row. It really helps me out more than you can ever imagine. And let me know in the comment section what you are doing while binge watching these videos. Are you playing video games? Are you doing some artwork? Are you going to sleep? Whatever you're doing, let me know. I'll heart it. And I'll even sometimes throw up your comments on screen. So here are some people. Here's a little bit of a shout out to these people. If you want a bit of a shout out in a future video, just comment how you're supporting the channel and yeah let's get back to it so anyways right at this point dave and ben you know they they kind of commit to you know doing the thing that they're going to do and after school you know they they basically have a plan to tell their parents that they're going on a night uh, like a nighttime walk at like eight and then they're gonna meet up at a certain place so anyways it's like 7 55 and dave's starting to get butterflies in his stomach like, this is really crazy. He's starting to feel really, like, weird about this, but he's like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going through with it. So it's 8 o'clock. He walks out there, and he meets up with his friend Ben, and sure enough, Ben has four eggs in his hand. So they're not going to, like, you know, some get. they're not going to load up a Gatling gun with a thousand eggs and completely, like, I don't know, uh, they're not going to turn her, egg, her, her house into an omelet or anything like that, but they're still going to egg the house, which, once again, disclaimer, do not do, do not ever do. It's not even, like, cool or anything like that. 
you're an idiot if you do it. Anyways, because you will get in trouble, dumbass. But anyways, Dave and Ben, they start walking over, and they're hiding the eggs, right? They, they walk over to where Miss Davenport's house is, and they sneak around over, and then they hide in the bushes, right? And Dave turns to Ben. He's like, dude, are you sure about this? And Ben's like, don't forget what she did to us. And with that, Dave gets, Dave gets a little angry. He takes one of the eggs. He's like, on three. And then Ben takes one of his eggs. He's like, all right. And Dave's like, three, two, one. And then two eggs splat. And then he's like, all right, we got to fire this one quickly. They take both of them again. And sure enough, they got four eggs right across the side of the house. And this time they need to get out of there. So they don't run away, but they kind of like power walk away and they kind of sneak out of there and they watch and they hear the door open. But by that time they are out of sight. So Dave and Ben quickly like power walk away and they go out of sight, out of distance. They're like, oh my God, (sighs) oh my God, that was crazy. They're like, we totally got her. And Dave is like, we totally got her. And Ben's like, I don't know. And Dave's like, dude, we totally got her. Like, how could you want to get her more? And once again, Ben's like, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know if that was enough. And Dave's like, well, that was enough for me. So sure enough, they go back, you know, they go back home. They go to bed. You know, the next day they wake up and, you know, uh, you know, they go to school and they're sitting. And, you know, once again, they go back to their, uh, their swing set. And Dave is like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel satisfied with what happened. I feel like she deserves more. And at this point, Ben's like, bro, or Dave's like, bro, Ben, what do you mean? We got our, we got our house. We got our good. And yeah, Ben's just like, man, I don't know, Dave. Like, I just, I just don't feel like we actually did get her good. I feel like, I feel like there's still more that can be done. The right, the wrong has not been righted. And Dave's like, bro, chill out. The, the wrong has definitely been righted, which by the way, two wrongs do not equal a right, bro. But and anyways, right. So sure enough, they go back to class. And they're sitting there, and, you know, Miss Davenport calls on Ben. Ben doesn't know the answer, and it doesn't embarrass him from the whole class. But, bro, when you get called on, and you very clearly are not trying to have your hand raised because you're not trying to get called on, and the teacher calls on you in class, and everyone looks, and you turn around, and you're like, ah, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. That's embarrassing. But apparently, that was just like... That was the last straw for Ben. And as they're like, so their school is out or not school's out, but school's out for the day. They're going to, they're waiting in line to be picked up by their parents. And Ben walks up to Dave and is like, bro, I'm getting revenge on Miss Davenport for embarrassing me today. And, you know, Dave's or Dave's like, bro, what are you talking about? And Ben's like, dude, she's been crazy recently. And what we did was just like, it was a, it was a little drop in the bucket. It really means nothing. But I'm going to get her tomorrow. And I'm going to use my Minecraft skills to get her back. I'm going to you put my training to good, good use. And Dave looked at him and had literally no idea what he was going to do. So he's like, okay, man, <laughs> cool. So anyways, the next day rolls around. And once again, before class, they're at recess and they're sitting on the swings. Dave and Ben always sit on the swings together. No one else really uses the swings, so they're kind of like, it's the place they always go to. And Dave is just talking, and Ben's like, bro, you're going to want to be in class today. And Dave's like, dude, of course I'm going to be in class. Like, <laughs> what, what would I do if I skipped it? Sit in the bathroom, dude? Like, what? Because remember, they didn't really have phones then. I mean, phones were a thing, but since they were kids, they didn't really have it. But uh, anyways, uh, Ben goes on, bro, you're going to want to be there. And Dave's like, okay, like, do you want to tell me? And Ben's like, nope, it's going to be a surprise. But just know that Miss Davenport is not going to want to mess with me or anyone else, including you, after this. And Dave's like, okay, man, cool. So they get to class. And, uh, you know, they... (laughs) Dave, Dave sits next to Ben, and he looks over, and there's something's weird with Ben's bag. And, and, and that's when Dave realizes, you know those, like, fake plushy Minecraft diamond swords that you can buy online, like the little toy things? Yeah, one of those, the handle of that was sticking out of his, it was sticking out of his backpack. And Dave looks at Ben and is whispering, like, yo, dude, why is there a, why is there a diamond sword in your backpack? And Ben's like, bro, you're going to see, dude. And Dave's like, okay. Uh, What? And Dave's like, bro, just wait. It's going to be crazy. And Dave's like, all right, man. I'll trust you on this one. So sure enough, right, you know, uh, Ben is kind of just waiting to be called on. 
And sure enough, Miss Davenport's like, all right, Ben, can you answer this? Because she was going around just asking people. And Ben's like, Miss Davenport, I did not raise my hand. And Miss Davenport's like, well, sometimes I call on people. It's just part of the class. And Ben is like, stands up. He's like, that is the last time that you disrespect me, ma'am. And he gr- reaches into his backpack and whips out his diamond sword. And Dave is like, oh, my God, this guy's gone off the rocker. And he starts swinging it around like, and uh, the, Miss Davenport's like, Ben, what is that? Like, why, why do you have like a little fake plastic sword or whatever? And Dave is like, you, or Ben is like, you don't understand. He starts walking towards her, swinging it. Everyone in the class is dead silent. They're like, bro, this kid's gone insane. Oh my God. But anyways, right, so... Dave, or not Dave, Ben is walking towards him with the sword. Miss Davenport's like, dude, or she doesn't say, okay, Miss Davenport, the teacher, the 40-year-old math teacher does not say dude, but she's like, Ben, put that down immediately, and you're coming with me to the, you know, the principal's office. And Ben's like, no, you disrespected me and my brethren for too long. And he goes up, and he's like, any last words? And, you know, Ms. Da- Ms. Davenport's like, Ben, put that thing down immediately. You and I are going to the principal's office. Cut off mid-sentence. Why was she cut off mid-sentence? Well, because at that point, Ben had enough, and he swung with the diamond sword. However, he got too close to her. So when he swung with the diamond sword, he held the diamond sword in his fist so tightly that when he swung, he didn't hit her only with the diamond sword. He accidentally hit her with his fist that was clutching onto the diamond sword so tightly that he basically just square punched her in the face. And at this point, it was such like, I know he's just a little kid, but just like the shock and the momentum and just somehow he got it just right that he went, whoopa! And Miss Davenport stood there for like a second and then just collapsed on the floor. And everyone, their mouths were just gaping open. They were just like, oh, what? What? Huh? Oh, oh, what is going on? What is going on? What? And so, okay, so sure enough, one girl just runs out of the room immediately. And Ben is kind of just standing there, just kind of shocked with what happened. Because, bro, you're not expecting to knock out the teacher with your diamond sword. I don't care how delusional you are. Like, you were just not expecting that to happen. And, you know, Ben's just standing there. He's like, oh, my God. 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 What I do? What I do? And when the class is like, oh, my God. She, is she dead? Oh, my God. She was not dead. She's just knocked out. But within, like, five minutes, the girl that ran out actually ran out just to go get like help from like security or whatever and sure enough security walks in and they look at what's happening they see the kid with the diamond sword and the teacher slumped over and the girl points to him says that's the kid security goes up grabs ben is like you're coming with us and the other security officer goes and checks like miss davenport's pulse to make sure that she wasn't like actually you know destroyed by that and sure enough she was fine but like she was knocked out they call an ambulance Ambulance comes over. Miss Davenport starts coming back, too. You know, she's given water, electrolytes, whatever. And Dave is just sitting there like, oh, my my God. So Ben actually gets up getting expelled from the school. He's not suspended. He's not in trouble. He's expelled from the school. They have, like, a zero tolerance for anything like that. However, you know, there was some questioning to Ben about, like, the recent, like, egging to her house because she did report it to the school. And Ben, thankful, Dave, thankful, like, thankful to Ben, Ben did not say anything. Ben kept his mouth shut, said he knew nothing of it, that that was ridiculous, and they didn't look any further into it. And Ben and Dave never really spoke that much afterwards because Dave's mom, like, I don't want you hanging out with Ben, he's a bad influence, and all that kind of stuff. And to this day, Dave and Ben have not seen each other since. And Dave does not know where Ben is. Ben might be at some other school. Like, Dave thinks that, like, the parents moved because he actually walked over to see, like, if Ben was at his house because he wanted to like to see how he was doing. And it was like a totally different family in that house when he went over. It was kind of weird, but whatever, right? And uh, yeah, to this day, Dave has no idea what's happening. And it was probably the craziest story of his life. Today, I get a story time of, a, of another one of these Minecraft kids deciding to uh, fight back against his babysitter in a quite 
uh, unconventional way, you might say. I mean, I bet you can read the title right now. So, yeah, with that being said, sit back, relax, subscribe if you haven't already. And let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story to me, let's call him Ryan. So, Ryan was friends with this kid who really liked Minecraft. So we're calling him the Minecraft Kid, because that always works in the title, and uh, you guys like the Minecraft Kid stories, and I like telling them. But anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to this kid who he didn't know that well, and we're just gonna call him the Minecraft Kid. So anyways, right, Ryan was invited over to the Minecraft Kid's house to, well, you know, play Minecraft with him. The idea was he was gonna go over on a Friday night and play some Bed Wars with this kid. Honestly sounds like a pretty sick Friday night, if you know what I mean. However, he didn't really know much about this kid, and he only kind of just started to know him because Ryan's mom and the Minecraft Kid's mom became friends, like, a couple months ago when they are both volunteering for something, or maybe they they just met, I don't know why, but Ryan's mom and the Minecraft kid's mom became friends, and for that reason, you know, Ryan's mom's like, oh, I have a son about your son's age, they should totally hang out. And since Ryan knew nothing about the Minecraft kid, it, at their first, like, interaction, which wasn't, like, a sleepover playdate type thing, he was like, so, what do you like to do? And he's like, I like to play Minecraft. He's like, cool, do you like to play Bed Wars? And he's like, yeah, it's my favorite game. So they bonded over it. So anyways, Ryan was heading over to the Minecraft kid's house, and uh, Ryan's mom told him, hey, just so you know, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom is not going to be there. Uh, she's going to be out for something. However, they hired a babysitter, and the Minecraft kid's mom should be back by, like, 10 or 11. And Ryan was like, all right, that's totally fine. I, I don't really care. It's not like we would have been hanging out with the Minecraft kid's mom and having her play in our Bed Wars trios or something, man. So it's fine. So Ryan gets over to the Minecraft kid's house, and when he gets there... No one greets him at the door. He kind of stands there for a second, and he knocks on it, and he stands there for, like, a little more time, and uh, he hears noises coming from upstairs. And it's a two-story house, and there's a, there's a window right above him, and the window is open, and he can hear noises. And you know what noises he hears? He hears block-placing noises. He hears uh, golden apple-eating noises. He hears bed-break noises. He's like, wait a minute. Bro, the Minecraft kid is playing Bed Wars right now. And, uh, you know, Ryan was thinking that he would have yelled up to the Minecraft kid, but the door eventually opened, and presumably the babysitter, or who we thought the babysitter was, which, no, it was the babysitter. That isn't, like, the big secret of the story, but the babysitter comes and, you know, opens the door and says, hey, so sorry, uh, Minecraft kid's upstairs. I'm, you know, making dinner right now for you guys. It'll be ready in, like, 30 minutes, so make sure you're not in the middle of the game in, like, half an hour. And uh, Ryan's like, all right, that sounds pretty cool. So he goes up the stairs, he opens the door, and the Minecraft kid's like, what's good, bro? I'm in the middle of a game, get your, like, laptop out and set your stuff up, and we'll go into, like, doubles in just a second. Uh, and so, sure enough, and by the way, guys, Bed Wars is, it's a Minecraft game where you can, like, it's fun. You should go look it up and play it, maybe. But just for context, it's a video game um, on Minecraft. But anyways, right, so he sets up his, uh, his gaming setup or whatever, he gets that all ready, and yeah, sure enough, the Minecraft kid eventually wins his game. Great work, Minecraft kid. Uh, not so great work at later the night, as you can tell by the title, but, uh, yeah, anyways, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, they start playing some, uh, some Bed Wars duos. Life's pretty good, and that's until they're in the middle of a game, and it's really, really intense, right? It's getting really down to the wire. If you know a thing or two about Bed Wars, all the beds have been broken, and they're really just both of them, Ryan and the Minecraft kid, are super stacked. They have their golden apples. They have their diamond armor. Yes, they sweated to diamond armor. And the two people that were remaining were about as good as they were. And they were playing for, for all the marbles at this point, man. This was pretty intense. And that's when the babysitter yells, All right, guys, time for dinner. And the Minecraft kid's like, Well, one second yells down that and you know ryan and the minecraft kid are like all right how are we gonna do this do we go in do we wait and the minecraft kid is a big fan of like camping which in a video game when you're camping that basically just means that like you're staying on defensive ground and you're waiting for the opponent to come to you which in bed wars if you're super super stacked that can kind of give you the advantage because you can always drop golems you got hometown advantage if you have the regen thing um Camping is an okay strategy, super late game, but that also means that the game's going to be a long time. And Ryan says to the Minecraft kid, hey man, do you think we should like be aggressive and we should be the one attacking them? 
because like, you know, our food is like dinner is ready. Do you think we should just go do that for the sake of doing that just so we can and we'll play another game when we come back. And the Minecraft kids like, no, like I know that we'll win. Like we have prop four diamond. They don't. They, but if we go to them, there's a chance that they knock us off. We fall while going. They fireball us over. It's just a lot more dangerous to go over. He said, we're staying here. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, he's like, all right, man, sure, we'll stay here. And then you know, a minute later, the babysitter says, guys, you don't want dinner to get cold? And the Minecraft kid's like, one second, which it wasn't going to be a second. Like, it was going to be probably like five, ten minutes on average remaining of the game. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid were waiting it out. And the thing was, the other team was camping too, which basically means that they were both just collecting gear and such, and they weren't attacking each other. So then the babysitter was, you know, yelled up again, like, guys, like, come on, like, I made you something, like, I told you not to be in the middle of a game. And he's like, once again, the Minecraft kid instead of saying, hey, I'm so sorry, can we be down there in five to ten minutes? Like, I apologize. He's like... One second! He just keeps yelling down one second. And the babysitter kind of did something that uh, she probably shouldn't have. Like, it just wasn't that deep, but I think the babysitter was kind of getting mad that, you know, they just were refusing to come down when, she, you know, she was sweating out some good food or whatever. So the babysitter, what she does is she goes to the Wi-Fi routum, and yes, you can probably already guess, unplugs it and replugs it which basically if your wi-fi at least in my case whenever my wi-fi is super slow or just kind of sucks i go to the wi-fi rotom or router or whatever i go rotom what am i saying i go to the wi-fi router and i think i combine router and modem my fault i go to i, I go to my wi-fi router or box unplug it replug it wi-fi is down for like five minutes but then it comes back nice and fresh and clean however the wi-fi goes down so basically right ryan and the minecraft kid are in the middle of a match and like they start like you know they start to go to like buy something from the store and ryan's clicking on it but it's not registering it and ryan's like dude Dude, 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 I, I think I'm disconnecting. And at this point, right, if you disconnect, you lose. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, no, it's not working. Why can't I place blocks? Why are things not registering? And then both at the same time, they get a message, like, ki not kicked, but like, uh, it, it disconnects from Hypixel, like, no connection. And the Minecraft kid's like, no! Starts slamming his fist. And Ryan, who doesn't really care, and it looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid was like, I was on a 99 win streak. I, w I won 99 games in a row. I was going to go to 100. I've been recording the whole thing. I was going to clip it and post it on YouTube, man. I was about to get 100. <laughs> Basically, he was pretty upset. So Ryan and the Minecraft kid, Ryan just looks at the Minecraft kid and be like, all right, man, I'm so sorry. Like, we'll grind it out tonight. We'll get you back to at least halfway, which was a lie. They were not going to play, nevertheless, win 50 games in a row. But, you know, Ryan's just trying to calm the air. And he's like, yeah, man, don't worry. We'll get back to it. So they walk down and the babysitter is waiting there. And she's like, guys, like, I asked you to come down. If you weren't going to come down, you should have at least told me. And I would have put it back in the stove. Now the food is cold. It really took me, you know turning off the Wi-Fi to get you guys to come down. Teenagers these days, or not teen, I guess, it's she, she's a teenager, she's the babysitter. I guess preteens these days. And that's when Ryan is like, oh my God, she turned off the Wi-Fi. That's why we froze in the game. And Ryan looks over at the Minecraft kid, whose face, he, he just stood there. Like he's been frozen by like a, a, a spell that turns you to stone. He's just frozen there, looking at her. Her, his like jaw starts to slack a little bit, like, oh my god. Oh my god, it was you. It was you who got in between me and the 100 Bed Wars win streak. Real quick comment, Minecraft, if you made it this far into the video, is that will be the secret word of the day. And if you want to support the channel, as always, just go ahead and binge watch several videos or a bunch of videos whenever you have the time. And let me know, let me know in the comments if you do do this because it really does support me more than you can probably even imagine. It boosts the channel. YouTube likes watch time anyways. So right now, remember, Ryan and the Minecraft Kid just lost in a very important game for the Minecraft Kid. He almost got a 100 win win streak, which is pretty, pretty impressive. I'm not going to lie. But unfortunately, the babysitter, who kind of like overreacted a little bit, got mad and unplugged the Wi-Fi, and that made them lose the game. But they probably were actually going to win. 
And so when they walk down, they have no idea that the babysitter was the reason why they lost the game until the babysitter is like, oh, guys, like, I really had to pull the Wi-Fi plug to get you guys down here. Like, crazy how, t- like, preteens are these days. Or kids on their phones too much. Like, on that, like, old man behavior type thing, even though this girl was, like, 17 or something. And the Minecraft kid is just so angry. He's like, you, you're the reason I lost my Minecraft game. And she's like, sorry, like, uh, should have come down faster or should have at least told me. And she goes to sit down. And Ryan is also like, all right, well, this is going to be a little awkward, but whatever. I'm still going down to sit down, like, whatever. Like, he's not going to react that ridiculously. Um, how do I say this? Yeah, no, he acted ridiculously. The Minecraft kid waits until the girl sits, or the babysitter, she's 17. I guess she's still, like, a girl, I guess. She is, on, I, I, guess, I don't know. She waits till the babysitter, right, sits down. And when the babysitter sits down, the Minecraft kid runs up to her grabs a chair, st- this is like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, grabs a chair, turns around, pulls down his pants, and rips, rips up, <laughs> dude, I- I'm 19 years old, and I'm telling you about Minecraft Kid revenge farting in someone's face. I'm doing it, I'm going through with it, I- I'm already so, I- I'm too far in the story to-, to turn around. The Minecraft Kid, after getting on the chair, ripping down his pants, farts in the babysitter's face, directly her eye while it was open. If you don't know, the reason why the fart smells bad, because there's a lot of gross particles in it. And when the gross particles get into your eye, your eye can get infected, and it can be really bad. So the babysitter legitimately falls out of her chair and starts, like, screaming. Because, like, the... Because <laughs> apparently he really ripped one. He really ripped one, man. And her eye was open. And it was really close. And uh, Ryan was like, well... So this kid and I have one thing in common. We like Bed Wars. And we have nothing else in common. And this will probably be the last time I ever hang out with him. And, uh, yeah, so the babysitter's like, what did you do? Why would you do that? Like, that's so ridiculous and disgusting. Like, ah, my eye, it burns. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my eye, it burns. Like, why would, why would you do that? Like, ah, uh, uh, uh. And Ryan looks at the Minecraft kid, and the Minecraft kid is literally laughing. He's like, <laughs> and Ryan's like, oh my god, this kid's insane. Because the thing was, Ryan's thinking to himself, Dude, this kid must do this all the time because, like, you're not just going to think to yourself, wow, I'm so angry at this person. Let me wait until they sit down, grab a chair, stand on it, turn around, pull down my pants, and fart directly point blank into their face. That's just not something that comes to you in the heat of the moment. That I, I mean, maybe. Maybe I'm just built different from all you guys. I really don't know, but that definitely doesn't come to me. But uh, sure enough, right, uh, the babysitter eventually gets up And Ryan and the Minecraft kid look at her face, and her left eye is red and swollen. And Ryan's like, oh my god, that is definitely not a coincidence. And the babysitter is like, move out of my way. And she moves past both of them, goes and finds the home phone, because I guess her phone wasn't on or something, and legitimately calls 911, an ambulance. Which, okay, that was maybe a little excessive, but maybe I wouldn't drive if my eyes were impaired and I thought that they were going to be infected and it would have been bad. And she walks back into the room and she's like angry, but also very clearly in pain, right? And she's like, her hand is over her eye and she's like, you, like, why would you do that? The Minecraft kid's like, well, I was actually on a 99 win streak and you pulled the plug, and I lost my 99 win. She's like, and you projectiled all your stuff out of your butt. Oh, God. How can I, how can I have a straight face and tell the story? A- anyway, she's like, and you probably gave me a raging infection. My eye burns. Like, uh, if I lose sight, I'm suing your fan. She was getting mad. And eventually, right, the ambulance has come. She explains the ridiculousness of the situation. The guy, uh, I mean, she's put, she sits in the ambulance, drives to the hospital. 
um, they check her out or whatever. But remember, this is from Ryan's perspective, so we don't exactly know what the doctor says. Ryan's mom, who got really invested in the situation afterwards, said that, like, the doctor's, like, her her eye is fine now, but the doctor said that, like, it really could have gone south if she didn't go there, like, immediately, which is insane. So anyways, right, uh, Ryan and the Minecraft kid are legitimately just in this house alone, and that's when the Minecraft kid's mom comes back early, super angry and upset, because the babysitter sent a message to, you know, his mom explaining everything and why that she, he, she had to leave the premises immediately. So the Minecraft kid's mom had to leave whatever she was doing to come back. And she was like, walks in. She's like, you, turns to the Minecraft kid, like, you did it. You pulled a, fa <laughs> you pulled a face fart on someone again. We've already talked about this. And Ryan, who is still there, he's already, by the way, he's already texted his mom to come pick him up. Um, is just like, again i mean he had a sneaking suspicion that this was not a first time thing as i said in the heat of the moment you don't think to you know use your butt as a weapon but he's like again this is a thing and the minecraft kid's like but mom i was on a 99 bed wars win streak and she's like that's enough no more bed wars for you forever and the minecraft kid's like man no no mom i promise i won't fart at anyone else's face again <laughs> What am I doing with my life? Anyways, right, so Ryan's mom comes, and Ryan's mom's like, hey, so sorry, things were weird today. Like, I'm just going to pick Ryan up. Thank you so much for having him over. Ryan, come with me now. And, you know, Ryan walks over and goes in the back seat of the car, and Ryan's mom is like, so, do you want to elaborate on I need to pick you up right now? My friend farted in the babysitter's eye, and now she's at the hospital. And Ryan did elaborate and it really didn't add any clarity to the situation. In fact, Ryan's mom just became more Click confused. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today, I got a pretty crazy story for you guys. It's about a Minecraft kid that gets so angry and jealous of the subscriber that he actually smashes his computer in front of everyone to get quote-unquote revenge. Uh, don't worry, karma does get him. Uh, but anyway, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this. So we're going to call today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brendan. Uh, by the way, if the, if the gameplay in the for Bed Wars really sucks in the background, I recorded it a month ago. I'm pretty better now. But anyways, we're calling this guy Brendan who submitted this story. So anyways, Brendan was in class or was in the same grade as this kid who we're going to call the Minecraft kid because his entire identity was being a, was kind of like around being super great at Minecraft player versus player battles. He was known as the one who was so great. So anyways, right, people just called him Minecraft kid. But anyways, there's also a girl who we're going to call Haley. Because uh, that may or may not be the, the girl I'm trying to marry in Stardew Valley right now. I gave her the bouquet. I'm winning, guys. Anyway, great game, by the way. I should stop getting distracted. Watch time will be bad. Anyways, there's this girl who we're going to call Haley. And both Brendan and the Minecraft kid had an interest in her. The difference was Brendan actually talked to her. Little pro tip for getting the ladies from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel. Number one dating advice YouTube channel on all of YouTube and the internet. Talk to... If you want to get to know them, talk to them. Th yes, believe it or not. Wow. But anyways, right, Brendan actually talked to Haley, and they were getting along pretty well, and the Minecraft kid literally never did. The Minecraft kid thought that his magical and powerful skills at Minecraft would literally just be so great and so wonderful and so enticing to the women, right, that uh, he, would, he wouldn't have to talk to Haley to make her fall in love with him. She would just see his epic PvP Bed Wars abilities, and she would be like, "Oh my God, I'm so I'm not I'm not throwing in that joke. Never mind. I I, I got a family friendly audience on here. I forgot." Anyways, right, so uh, Brendan, w or the Minecraft kid was aware that Brendan was probably also trying to go for Haley because Brendan was talking to her all the time. It kind of the word around the like kind of the word on the street was that you know. Brendan and Haley, oh my god, they're gonna be a thing soon, dude, they're in sixth grade, like, that's, that's how it goes, oh my god, are they gonna get to fifth base, aka holding hands, oh my god, it, it, anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid comes up to Brendan one day, and remember, Brendan and the Minecraft kid aren't necessarily boys, in fact, they don't even know each other that well, but the Minecraft kid is like, so, I see that you're trying to court Haley, 
and, and, and Brendan's mind, he's like, bro, this is 20 whatever, right? I think this story was a little old. I'm not sure. I actually don't know when this story happened. It was submitted to me on my Instagram. You can go follow it. You should go follow it. Anyways, Brendan's thinking to himself, did this guy just say court? Like it's literally the 21st century. Are you serious? And then the Minecraft kid goes on to say, I offer you, like, I offer you, like, a quest, or I, 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 I ask you that we duel in Minecraft to decide who will get Haley's hand in dating. And, uh, I mean, Brendan was kind of just like, in his head, he's like, all right, well, first of all, I'm not dating her. Second of all, the winner of a Minecraft PvP battle is not going to decide who she decides, right? It's not up to them. This isn't like, I don't know, the barbaric era of like, oh yeah, like uh, I actually have, like all men have control, women have no say. Like, oh, I want to marry you, so you're marrying me. And also, I don't think there ever was an era where you did PvP battles to decide who was like, you know, who would marry the girl. I'm better at Minecraft. I get all the women. Nah, this, that's never been true. It doesn't matter what parallel universe or anything like that you go into, man. I am sorry, Minecraft sweats. I am so sorry. But Brendan, who kind of knows that, you know, he's going to be getting with Haley anyways, uh, thinks to himself, all right, well, this will be kind of funny. Like, whatever, man. Who cares? So Brendan says, sure, we'll do a PvP battle to decide who gets Haley's hand. Because he's kind of laughing. He's kind of goofing. But the thing is, the Minecraft kid takes it super seriously. He's like, yes, you fool. Don't you know that I am super great at Minecraft? <laughs> and uh, Brendan's like, chill out, bro. Like... All right, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll PvP fight to, to, to decide who gets Haley's hand in marriage. Lol, like, okay. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, tomorrow at recess, we go to the table. Basically, at their school, there was a table where if kids wanted to bring in their computers, if they were in the sixth grade or higher, they could, and they could play on them. I, I, I know at my school, you weren't even allowed to have your phone out, but I guess each school's a little different. So basically, right, the next day rolls around, and Brendan and the Minecraft kid, they both bring their gaming setups, which I guess both of them have laptops, because I play Minecraft on a laptop, man. I don't have a, I don't have a desktop. That's I want to be able to move my thing around. But anyways, right, they both bring in their computers, and Brendan just has a kind of a crappy MacBook Air. And this is coming from someone who, uh, up to my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I got all my Minecraft gameplay from my MacBook Air at like 20 frames per second. So I understand the struggle, bro. I get it. So anyways, Brendan comes in with his crappy MacBook Air, and the Minecraft kid comes in with his like, uh, I don't know, his Alienware $3,000 super gaming laptop with his a super fancy keyboard and it takes him like five minutes to get his setup all perfect. He's like, all right, I'm ready. And uh, so sure enough, uh, you know, they both sit down and Brendan is like, all right, so how are we doing this? And uh, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, we're going to play one game of, uh, of, of Bed Wars. Yeah, Bed Wars. And, you know, Brent, at first Brendan was like, bro, how are we going to do that? But then the Minecraft kid said that he had the, like, MVP++ rank on Hypixel, which Hypixel is a server that lets you play Bed Wars, which is the game I was playing in the very beginning. And if you have plus, like, MVP++, you can make private games where it's just you and your friends. So anyways, um, the Minecraft kid, you know, sent a dual request to Brendan or a Bed Wars party, whatever. Anyways, all you got to know is they were playing Minecraft and they were playing Bed Wars and it was just them. It was just Brendan and the Minecraft kid in a game. And uh, sure enough, they enter the Bed Wars game and, you know, they, you know, they're doing the stuff you do in Bed Wars, put down the bed defense. And you know what happens? Um, uh, Brendan is at middle. He's gathering emeralds, which is a good material to get. However, you know, his bed was exposed or he wasn't at his bed. He saw a bed destroyed message, which basically means in Bed Wars, if your bed breaks, you will not respawn. So sure enough, the Minecraft kid had like, I don't know, God bridged over with his crazy 10,000 clicks per second mouse, definitely using vape or something, but whatever, man. And so sure enough, you know, the, the Minecraft kid comes to middle and Brendan and him, they show down for a PvP fight. They're gonna decide who gets Haley, even though Brendan knows that one, he's not good at Minecraft, and the Minecraft kid is, and two, this will not decide who gets Haley. This is hilarious. He just did it because it's funny, lol. So anyways, they enter their PvP battle, and they go in, and Brendan loses because he is just simply worse. And the Minecraft kid, after, you know, hitting, you know, Brendan enough times with a sword that he dies, is like, yes, Haley is mine! 
And everyone, who, because remember, it's recess time, because, dude, they had, like, re- I don't know if it's called recess, but they had, like, a break period. Um, so everyone was kind of around there, and a bunch of kids turn around and are kind of like, uh, what, 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 huh? It, 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 are, are you okay, sir? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid is like, you fool, you should never have dueled me for Haley's hand in dating in Minecraft. You should have known by my reputation that I would have absolutely slapped you. And Brendan looks at him with his face of like, yeah, man. Ah, that sucks. Wow. That is just too bad. This kind of reminds me of the first season of Parks and Rec, if you saw that, where uh, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Andy really wants to get his girlfriend back. So he like offers like a a pool game with this guy named Mark who disappears after season one. I I don't know. Maybe the actor wanted to do something else. And he's kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll bet. And the the girlfriend of Mark at the time on this pool game and Andy wins. He's like, yes, she's mine. But uh, reality sits and kind of kicks in and he's like, wait. Huh? But I won her fair and square. Same thing here. So the Minecraft kid is still like, I don't know, Fortnite, uh, W, like, d- doing the little dances, doing the L dance, doing the little other cringe stuff. He's like, <laughs> Haley is mine. I didn't even have to talk to her, and she's going to be my girlfriend. I'm going to go to 10th base and hold her hand. <laughs> and, and Brendan, at this point, is, like, really trying to hold back a smile. He's like, all right, this is so funny, dude. Don't blow it. Don't make it apparent. Uh, and he's like, yeah, man, you totally, oh, man, I can't do this. I, you totally won. You to- I can't do this. Man. He's, just, he's, he's really trying to do it. He's like, yeah, you totally won Haley's hand in, in dating because you beat me in Minecraft. Yep, that's totally what happened. Holding back the laughter, holding back the tears at this point. And uh, sure enough, right, Brendan's like, all right, man, go ahead. And he's like, yes. I'm I'm going to tell everyone about my victory dance so that you know that so everyone knows that you lost to me in Minecraft and that's why Haley is mine. <laughs> and the Minecraft kid runs away uh, to go tell his other okay, friends. Well, I don't know about that. I think his friends are uh, his bed wars win streak and nothing else. But whatever, right? So Brendan goes over and finds Haley. Says, "Hey, um so I just played this guy cuz he wanted to duel me for your hand in dating." And Haley's like, what? And Brennan's like, yeah, I thought it'd be funny. So by the way, I lost the duel because obviously you can't do that, but I thought it was funny and I lost. So he's going to come over to claim his prize, I guess. And Haley's like, all right, well, this is kind of funny, but oh, this is an awkward situation. And Brennan's like, yeah, I probably should have told you about this beforehand. If you need me to be here, I can, I can subvert. I, I can come in and uh, help you with the situation. She's like, she's like, all right, well, Thanks for giving me context, I guess. So sure enough, a little while later, uh, the Minecraft kid comes around and he finds Haley. And he comes up to her and he says, So, Haley, did you hear the news? This might be the first time the Minecraft kid ever spoke to Haley in his life. He was too busy. He was too busy sweating at Minecraft to even bother with the ladies. They'll come to me, man. I got a Bed Wars win streak. Uh, real quick, comment Bed Wars down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. And if you want to help the channel out, go ahead and binge watch some more videos after this one or when you're doing something else. And let me know in the comment section if you do so, so I can say thank you. Anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid's like, so did Haley, did you hear the news? And she's like, well, I was told that you and Brendan had a little Minecraft video game session and that you won and that you now think that I'm your girlfriend. And the Minecraft kid's like, mm. That is exactly what happened. You're so observant. You'll be a great girlfriend. And Haley's like, dude, like, that's not how it works. And the Minecraft kid's like, we had an agreement. And Haley's like, yeah, well, I wasn't part of that agreement. Uh, how, do you think Brendan or you have the right to me as a girlfriend? And this is what the Minecraft kid's starting to piece together that his offer to duel Brendan made literally no sense. And he's like, oh, well, um, so... So when we were playing, so when we were playing Minecraft, I beat Brenda. Uh, can you, can, do you want to be my girl? And then eventually, like Minecraft kid starts to realize, ah, oh, dude, he messed up, bro. He messed up big time. And he's like, wait, did did Brent? How, wait, how, who told you? And you know, at this point, uh, you know, she was like, uh, Haley was like, yeah. So Brendan told me about this. And then the Minecraft kid's like, so Brendan knew the whole time. 
that this wasn't going to work? And Haley's like, yeah, well, anyone who is logical, middle, just gets cut off the Minecraft kid, sprints away. And Brennan walks up to Haley and is like, so, is that terrible? And Haley's like, well, he's pretty mad at you, and he ran away, so I don't know what he's cooking up. And that's when you, we heard an, or not we, that's when Brendan and Haley and everyone else in the room heard a noise. The noise was something being thrown on the ground, smashing and flying into a million pieces. And that's when Brendan walks out and Haley walks out too. Basically, everyone walks out and they see the Minecraft kid standing above a pile of disc computer parts. And that's when, at first, Brendan thinks, oh my God, he smashed his computer out of rage. But Brendan looked at the table to see that the Minecraft kid's computer was still there. And in fact, the only computer missing was his. And that's when he realized that the Minecraft kid obliterated his MacBook. And there was a teacher present. So the teacher is like, Brad, like Minecraft kid, like, what did you just do? And Brendan speaks up and says, uh, he just smashed my MacBook. And all of a sudden, the teacher looks at Brendan and looks at the Minecraft kid and says, you two, come with me. Sure enough, teacher brings him to the principal's office. Principal's office hears what the teacher says. She hears both sides, which the Minecraft kid literally has nothing to say. Like, what are you going to say, dude? And uh, yeah, parents were called, and uh, the Minecraft kid's mom had to reimburse Brendan's mom for the, to buy a new computer. Uh, the Minecraft kid had to write a formal apology to Brendan, and also write a formal, ap- and actually both of them had to write a formal apology to Haley because Brendan had to explain the situation, and the teacher's like, dude, that's not cool. And uh, also the Minecraft kid got a week of detention for this. So moral of the story is one, if you're just playing Minecraft all day, you may not, uh, that may not be the most ideal or most optimal strategy to, uh, to get the ladies to love you. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, man. M- maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Don't listen to me. I don't know. <laughs> okay. How do I introduce a story like this, man? I mean, you guys can read. You've read the title. All I can say is strap in, d- uh, buckle up, because uh, this is going to be quite quite the ride. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy stories. And let's call today's subscriber who submitted this. Uh, let's call this guy Mason. So this all happened one day when Mason was in class. And Mason was in fourth grade when this whole thing went down. And there's a kid who, once again, kind of like wore the same Creeper shirt every single day. And it was like the Creeper hoodie. And really, that's not a big deal. They're, like, if you want to wear the Creeper hoodie, I don't really care. However, the mine we're just going to call him the Minecraft kid, right? Because of the Creeper hoodie. Uh, he wore it every single day. Um, and um, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe he has a closet full of like 18 different varieties of the Creeper hoodie. Or maybe his mom does a load of laundry every single day. Or maybe he's just wearing the same Creeper hoodie every single day. I mean, you guys can believe whatever you want, but I think one of those three are a little bit more uh, likely uh, than the other. But anyways, right, so there's this kid called the Minecraft Kid because he wore the Creeper hoodie every single day. And he was a little bit strange. And there's nothing wrong with you being a little bit strange. Like, I'm a little bit strange. I mean, I run an ad- I run a YouTube channel, man. I mean, that's, that's already putting me in the strange category, unfortunately. But hey, man, I love the YouTube too much to like drop it or anything like that. But sure enough, this all happened one day when the Minecraft kid was in class with Mason. And the Minecraft kid raised his hand. And another thing you need to know about the Minecraft kid is he would take bathroom breaks like six times per class. And I don't know about you, but back in the day, I definitely used to go to the bathroom to like go on my phone or just take a break from the class. However, I would be very like a strategic with it. I wouldn't do it every single day. I do it like every other day. I would make sure that I wasn't away for too, too long, like maybe five minutes max. But this kid, bro, would just abuse the bathroom break button. He was like spamming it, just trying to like, I, I don't know, man. But every single day, I go to the bathroom minimum two times, maximum like six times. That's what I'm told at least. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, once again, one day, the Minecraft kid raises his hand for the third time in class. And this has been going on for months. And I just think at this point, the teacher kind of just snapped. And he looks at the Minecraft kid. He's like, yes. And the Minecraft kid says, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And and here's the thing, right? The teacher should not have reacted in the way that he reacted because maybe this kid has like IBS or something. Maybe he has to go to the bathroom like a ton per day. However, if he did, it was not registered with the nurse or even if it was, the nurse did not communicate that properly to the teacher, um, which she probably should have or he probably should have just because, you know, I I don't know. If a kid's going to the bathroom seven times per day, that might be a little suspicious to the teacher. However, the teacher was kind of just assuming that the kid was just going in to like go on his phone or whatever. 
and that was probably the case, but I mean, you really don't know. But after the Minecraft kid says like, hey, can I go to the bathroom for like the third time? Uh, the teacher's like, y you know what? No, you can't go to the bathroom. And the whole class kind of turns around and is like, wait, whoa, 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 pause. Like, hold up now. Like, this kid's been asking you to go to the bathroom like seven times a day for the last six months, and now you're saying no? Like, what changed, man? And the teacher's like, you're going to have to wait till the end of class. You've been going way too much, way too often. Uh, I think you're missing too much of classwork, right? And the Minecraft kid was not happy to hear this. Uh, for all we know, maybe he actually did have to go to the bathroom. But Mason, to be fair, right? Mason has gone to the bathroom. He's the subscriber who submitted this story. He's gone to the bathroom t at times when the Minecraft kid has been in there. And Mason can hear the volume from his iPhone up all the way. The Minecraft kid is in there playing like Flappy Bird or watching TikToks or whatever, man. He's just going on his phone. Maybe he also has to go to the bathroom, but the Minecraft kid obviously definitely was kind of like, most likely was abusing it just to go to the bathroom. But sure enough, the Minecraft kid raises his hand again. He's like, I gotta go. And the teacher says, like, Minecraft kid, you've gone like six times during class every single day for the last six months. You're missing out on class time. Please try and like conserve your like bathroom breaks. I will let you go, but just give it a second. I, I just can't let you go and disrupt the class like a thousand times every single day. And the Minecraft kid was getting kind of angry. And he didn't say anything. He wasn't like, no, I really gotta go. And the Minecraft kid also didn't just stand up. Unfortunately, I think the Minecraft kid watched a little bit too much uh, South Park. If you guys know what I'm talking about, there's an episode of South Park, which is a TV show, kind of aimed for adults, so I wouldn't go search this up if you're too young, but there's this kid named Cartman. And one time, Cartman needed to uh, basically go to the principal's office, so he decided to do number two on the desk of a teacher. And I think the Minecraft kid got a little bit too inspired by Cartman, because the Minecraft kid is like, you're gonna want, like, I need to go to the bathroom and you're gonna regret it if you don't let me. And the teacher kind of turns around kind of sharply and looks at him and says like, you shouldn't be threatening people. Like that's, that's a very bad thing to do. Like you shouldn't be doing that. He said, you know what? Just because you're threatening me and said in such a threatening voice, you're not allowed to go to the bathroom for the rest of the class. And this only made the Minecraft kid even more upset. And Mason is just sitting here watching this back and forth. And Mason kind of feels a little bit for the Minecraft kid because maybe he really needs to go. Maybe the first two times, yeah, I mean, it is kind of karma if you were just going to the bathroom six times per day just to go on your phone. However, right, I mean, maybe he really has to go, man. It's kind of cruel to like not let someone go to the bathroom when they really need to. But he did just go like five minutes ago and 10 minutes before that. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, right. You know, Mason was sitting there. And the Minecraft kid raises his hand for a final time and says, you're going to let me grow, go or you're going to regret this. And once again, the Minecraft, the teacher is like, if you threaten me again, you're not going to be allowed to go to the bathroom ever again when you're in my class. And at this point, the whole class is like, oh. I don't know if they're actually like hyping up like that, but things were getting legit and they could feel it for sure. They're like, oh, dang, dude, like stuff's getting real, right? And sure enough, the Minecraft kid says, very well, have it your way. The teacher kind of like has a little bit of a smile, but quickly brushes it off, probably because he felt like he won that discussion. Like, all right, well, this kid who's been abusing the bathroom system has lost and I won as a teacher and I asserted my dominance. However, right, dominance was not asserted. In fact, uh, it, I don't even know how to explain what's about to happen, so I'm going to do my best. Uh, bear with me. Because the Minecraft kid, it, he, 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 he kind of like stands up. And the teacher is currently facing the board, so the teacher doesn't notice the Minecraft kid stand up. However, Mason, the subscriber who submitted this story, as well as a bunch of other people, by the way, Mason submitted this to my Instagram. It's in the description. You should go follow it, even if you're not going to go submit stories. Uh, give me a big number. Make me feel good. Anyways, Mason is watching this whole thing go down, and he sees that the Minecraft kid stands up from his desk. And then the Minecraft kid stands on his chair. And then, then the Minecraft kid stands on his desk. And at this point, almost half the class has turned around watching the Minecraft kid because he's making enough of a commotion. And the next, uh, YouTube, please be nice. YouTube, YouTube man, I'm going to describe the next thing without making you mad. Uh, so the Minecraft kid, well, he drops his pants. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, he drops his pants. And he says, teacher, and the teacher turns around and is about to be like Minecraft kid for the last time. And he turns around and is like, what? 
What the, the, huh? And the Minecraft kid is like, teacher, I told you, you, I told you, you'd regret not letting me go to the bathroom. And uh, just to put it very, uh, just to be point blank, just to be straight up, just, like, just getting right to the point. Uh, yeah, he just, n number two uh, 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 on the desk, man. It, it wasn't like anything crazy, right? It was pretty, just a little bit, but yeah. Um, and everyone in the class starts like screaming. Like some of the girls are like, ah! some of the guys are like, yo, what? That's disgusting, dude. And the teacher's like, Minecraft kid, what on earth are you doing? And the Minecraft kid's like, I told you, you should let me go to the bathroom, dude. Now you're just paying the consequences. The Minecraft kid was like feeling all full of himself. And the teacher was like, D -d -d Go to the principal's office now! And I don't think the Minecraft kid totally, like, you know, realized what was going on. And the Minecraft kid starts to panic. And the Minecraft kid looks to his left and looks to his right. And when the Minecraft kid looks to his right, you know who he sees? He sees the subscriber. He sees Mason. And he makes eye contact with Mason. And Mason is looking directly at the Minecraft kid and is thinking to himself, Oh my god. Oh my god. What? Wow. But then he's like, wait, why is this kid making eye contact with me? And he's like, Mason made me do it. He dared me. And the teacher's like, Mason! Mason's just like, dude, I swear I was just sitting here. What do you mean? And, and the teacher's like, you know what? Know what? You know what? Minecraft kid, Mason, and anyone else involved, go to the principal's office right now! And Mason is just like, why? 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 So he gets up, and because he's not going to like fight with his teacher when the teacher's literally going through a massive rage moment. And, uh, you know, he starts walking up, and he walks up to the Minecraft kid. He's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. The Minecraft kid's like, just doesn't say anything. So he walks up to the principal's office, and he sits down. And the principal's, off the principal's like, what happened? And Mason explains the side of the story, that he was just a, like a bystander sitting there. And then, you know, eventually, the Minecraft kid walks in, because uh, he had to, uh, I mean... It wasn't like he could, okay, I'm not going to explain why it took him longer, but he got there, right? And sure enough, the principal's like, Minecraft kid, why would you do that? And the Minecraft kid's like, explains aside, and then she's like, and why is Mason here? And the Minecraft kid, who kind of panic blamed him to kind of like lesser the punishment on him, is like, um, Mason dared me to do it. And Mason's like, dude, I don't even know who you are. You're just in my class. And the principal's like, I don't know, Mason, why would he lie about this? Like, there's literally nothing for him to gain. And Mason's like, dude, I don't know. Uh, real quick, comment Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day. And I'll try and harden as many of those comments as possible. And also, if you want to help us get to 600,000 faster, uh, binge watch the videos. YouTube really likes promoting my channels when you guys, like, binge watch a bunch of my videos. So after this video, or when you have the time to sit down and watch a bunch of videos, I've made playlists. You can just, like, go to my channel page. And let me know in the comments when you do this so I can heart it and say thank you. And just give a little bit of appreciation for you guys really helping me out. Out, and I really do appreciate it. Anyways, the story gets even more insane, so stay tuned. So anyways, right, back to the story. Mason is in a position where he was just dragged into this. Honestly, Mason to this day doesn't totally understand why the Minecraft kid even singled him out. Mason and the Minecraft kid weren't close friends. They didn't even really know each other. And Mason just assumes that he randomly looked around and picked someone who he just happened to remember the name of and blamed them just to kind of like lesser the punishment on him. In his mind, or I guess in his panic, the idea was like, oh, if I blame someone else and say that they forced me to do it, my punishment will be lesser, right? Which is like, bro, why? Why would you do that? But anyways, sure enough, the principal, unfortunately, is not believing Mason because Mason is explaining that he doesn't even know this kid and he has no idea why he would lie. And uh, the principal kind of doesn't believe him because he's like, Mason, like, if, like, why would the Minecraft kid lie about this, right? It just doesn't make any sense. And the principal's like, well, I guess I just have to make a judgment call in this situation and Mason, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm going to have to give you a punishment too because I don't believe you. And Mason is just like, what? Are, are you serious? And then Mason said, even if I did like dare him to do something ridiculous, it's still up to him. Like I didn't for the record. And I stand by that because I don't even know this kid. But if someone was to, why, why would that even matter? And the principal's like, so you're admitting it. And Mason's like, no, I'm just saying it'd be stupid even if I did. But it's double stupid because I didn't even do it. And the principal's like, don't say stupid to me. Mason's like, I'm in fourth grade. And also this is double stupid. What can I say? 
So eventually, right, the principal is like, all right, well, I'm going to have to call both your mothers and explain what happened. And Mason's just like, dude, this is the most ridiculous day of my life. So sure enough, the principal calls up both their mothers saying, hey, both your sons got in trouble. If you're not busy, can you please come in? And the Minecraft kid's mom was busy at the time, but Mason's mom kind of either had the day off or for some reason wasn't really needing to like be wherever she was. And she said, yeah, I'll come in right away. Maybe she was busy and she thought that this was a good idea to go see like what happened to her son. So Mason's mom comes in and she's like, looks at Mason with this look of like, what have you done? And Mason looks at her with these like eyes of like, bro, I don't know what's going on, confusion, what whatever, right? The principal is like, all right, hi, Miss Mason's mom, or, you know, whatever. Uh, well, I'm so glad you could come. And the principal explains what happened. And then she kind of explains how she doesn't believe Mason. And Mason's mom started with a look of concern, and then she almost got a look of, like, annoyance. And the look of annoyance grew and grew the more the principal told the story. And Mason was looking at this and was like, okay, is my mom on my side, or is the look of annoyance because she's so annoyed with me? Either way, ah, uh, this, is, this, this is just the worst situation ever. So sure enough, right, you know, by the end of the story, Mason's mom's like, uh, why am I here? The principal's like, well, didn't you hear, like, your son, uh, you know, a, a, a supposedly dared him to do it. And Mason's mom, like, first of all, my son disagrees with that statement. You don't really have any proof, but let's say he even did. Why would that matter? And the principal kind of was a little shocked. And Mason's mom's like, you know, isn't it like a, like a cliche saying for parents to be like, if your friend jumped off a bridge, would you as well? Like, are you really just supposed to do whatever the popular kid does? And then Mason's mom's like, even if my son did, which I'm not convinced he did, dared him to do what he did on the desk, right? Why is that my son's fault? Is this kid not like able to function by himself? What, a, you know, like, is the blame 100% not on, you know, the Minecraft kid anymore? Is any of the blame really supposed to be on my son? And the principal's like, well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but I've made up my mind. Like, your son's going to be suspended for the day. He can come back tomorrow, but he can't be, he can't come back today. And the, and the Mason's mom is like, are you serious? Like, really? And she's like, yeah. And then Mason's mom's like, all right, what punishment did the Minecraft kid get? And the principal said, well, we're doing equal punishment. And Mason's mom's like, you can't be serious, man. You can't be serious. And the principal's like, I'm sorry you disagree, but this is the punishment. So Mason's mom's like, Mason, come with me. And Mason's like, oh, I can't tell if my mom's mad or not. So Mason gets up, kind of all scared or whatever, and he sits in the car. And Mason's mom's like, well, this was unexpected, but uh, Mason, today you got a day off. It is your vacation day. Because that punishment is ridiculous. And then she, and Mason's like, okay, she's on my side. And Mason's mom is like, Mason, please be honest. Did you even, did you, did you dare him to do it? And Mason's like, mom. Pro I promise. Since so, look, it looks like you're not angry at me either way. Why would I lie about this? Because and I didn't do it. I don't even know who this kid is. Why would I dare him to do something so ridiculous? Mason's mom's like, yeah, that's what I thought. But even if you did, like, who cares? And this punishment's ridiculous. So you and I, we're going to get ice cream because today you learned a very good lesson. Sometimes there are rules that are ridiculous and you'll be punished. But stay true to your convictions, man. Stay true to your convictions. So Mason and his mom went and got ice cream, and uh, I don't think the Minecraft kid, the Minecraft kid's mom, was as excited <laughs> or as or as pleased with her son. But click the video man. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Buckle up, strap in, because today I have probably one of the weirdest camp stories I've ever received. That involves a very creepy Minecraft girl that threatens to literally consume, like eat, like nom nom munch time, the subscriber. Yeah, it makes literally no sense. It's super weird. So yeah, strap in, uh, subscribe if you like stories. Let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story. Let's call him Jimmy. So this all happened over the summer, and this was Jimmy's first time ever going to a sleepaway camp. And this specific sleepaway camp was like a wilderness-themed sleepaway camp. They're very popular if you've never been to sleepaway camp, where basically you go and you learn how to kind of like survive on your own. I mean, not really, but it's like kind of like you're cosplaying as someone who would survive on their own, but you're not really. Anyways, so this all happens about on the first 
second day of sleepaway camp. Because the first day, you know, Jimmy's mom dropped him off and it's like introductions and all that good stuff. But on the second day, what they did at this camp is they just like threw you, they threw you right into it, right? So on the second day of camp, uh, they kind of divided you up into mini groups randomly, not by your cabin. They wanted to mix you up like with people that you don't see normally. And this was your camp group. And basically on that second day, you were to go and you were to like bring all the camping like equipment, not go too far away from the campsite, but uh, go basically into the woods, which they've kind of spotted out before to make sure it's like a viable place. And you go into the woods and you set up camp and you stay the night, kind of just to throw you right into it. So anyways, Jimmy hears his name read aloud and then he hears the name of a bunch of other people that he doesn't, re that he just doesn't recognize because, you know, he's new to the camp and basically everyone there is going alone. And so he walks over because they're all in this big field, right? And he walks over to meet his group and he meets up with his group and he kind of like scans around and everyone looks pretty normal except there's this one girl who Jimmy really didn't think much of, but she had this creeper sweatshirt on and she also had in her backpack a foam diamond pickaxe. Like, you know how like in Minecraft there's a diamond pickaxe? Uh, basically, you can buy like a replica of that that's like foam and plastic or whatever. And that was the two kind of like weird things right and she also had like some other stuff like she had some crazy socks on she had the like the black boots but that's kind of standard what really set her apart was the fact that she was wearing the creeper hoodie and had the big minecraft fake diamond pickaxe in her back pocket right or in her backpack and that wasn't what made her weird but that's why we're calling her the Minecraft girl, because, you know, she wore the creeper hoodie or whatever. And so anyways, right, uh, they're walking, so they start walking towards the campsite, or the, the wilderness, right? Uh, so they walk over to the wilderness, and the first thing that they do is, since it's kind of getting close to the middle of the day, is they've all brought, like, a big, like, uh, some kind of, like, portable tent with them. They were given one before they left, and then they were to kind of carry it over there. It was kind of difficult to carry, but that was kind of part of the whole, that was kind of the part of the whole shebang. And so sure enough, right, eventually they get to the campsite and uh, the instructor's like, all right, guys, try and find a clearing that is, uh, you know, pretty, that is clear, find a, find a clearing that's clear, but uh, try and find an area that's not too, you know, mucked up with uh, sticks and rocks and stones and brush and stuff that would make it difficult to have your five foot by five foot campsite kind of like your, or your tent, like be able to you know, be placed, basically find a place that's good for your tent is what I'm trying to say with a billion words instead of two. Um, and so sure enough, you know, Jimmy finds a spot and there's kind of like a big opening or kind of not a big opening, but there's kind of a clearing where it is still covered more or less by the forest. However, it is good to put some tents down. So Jimmy uh, kind of like puts his tent down there. There's only really about enough space for another tent. And so the Minecraft girl immediately rushes over and puts her stuff down before anyone else could. And there was a few other people kind of casually, nonchalantly walking over to that site. But the Minecraft girl was very insistent that she was the one that put her, uh, her tent down. And Jimmy thought that was a little weird. But then again, Jimmy kind of just brushed it off as like, oh, whatever, like... I mean, that's probably pretty normal. She saw a site that she wanted, so she wanted to claim it, and she knew other people were going for it. Little did Jimmy know that the Minecraft girl did not care that there was an opening there. In fact, she would have taken a place that was probably a terrible opening, like a place that would have massive sticks that would poke through her tent, because she wasn't doing it for the camping, you know? She was doing it for Jimmy. And the only reason why she wanted that spot is because Jimmy was right there. But Jimmy didn't know this uh, as of now. And so Jimmy and the Minecraft girl and, you know, a few camp counselors, like, helped them set up their tents or whatever. And other people were not far away at all. Like, Jimmy could see, like, at least five or six other campers, like, a little bit farther out, like, like I don't know, like 10 or 20 feet farther, finding more openings and setting up their camps as well or their, their tents. And so before, like, they go to bed, they all congregate together and they come around this, like, camp, uh, this, like, bonfire type thing. And they're all given, like, beans and a can or whatever. And it's not the greatest meal ever, but hey, man, you're, you, you decided to do a wilderness camp. And you just, and part of the description of the wilderness camp is, like, you slept at least one night out in the woods. You're not going to be getting some, like, four-star buffet. Uh, you got that, uh, st I don't know, some pork tenderloin. You got your, I don't know, your filet mignon. No, no, no. You're going to get that canned cold beans, bro. So eventually, right, uh, they're done with dinner, and it's time to go to bed. It's time to sleep, or at least attempt to sleep 
in your tent. And you know, this is pretty hard because there's the ambiance of the outside, which is very loud. There's, uh, you know, it's probably not the most comfortable. There's probably plenty of mosquitoes, even if you tent, even if you close your, your zipper of the tent very well and you make sure it's all, I don't know, bug proof. They, they always find a way to get in there. And there's always at least one or two mosquitoes buzzing around your head. So sleep is difficult, but, uh, you know, Jimmy goes to his campsite. He gets in his tent. He zips it up. You know, he brought a book with them. So he's reading a few, you know, pages from the, or a few, yeah, about a chapter or two from the book. He's got his little, like, uh, flashlight to read with. And eventually he turns off his flashlight and closes his eyes to try to go to sleep. And it's a little difficult, but eventually he falls asleep. But that's when, when he believes a couple hours later, he's really disoriented when he wakes up, so he's not totally sure when, but that's when he wakes up to the sound of rustling, and not just like a few, I don't know, uh, squirrels going by, a few tree branches fall, but like movement, like heavy movement, is from right outside his tent site. And he wakes up and he's kind of confused by this. It's not like a clear tent or anything, and obviously a man doesn't have windows, he's in a tent. And that's when he starts to get really nervous, because the zipper that is closed, that has his tent closed up, starts to open like someone from the outside is unzipping his tent. So Jimmy kind of like gets up pretty stud, like pretty quickly, and that's when he sees it's the Minecraft girl, and she kind of pokes her head through the camp or, or through the zipper and walks right in. And Jimmy's like, "Hello," kind of like whispers it a little bit because he doesn't want to be super loud. And that's when the Minecraft girl is like, "Hi." And this is where things start to get weird, but a uh, real quick comment, uh, Minecraft down below. That's the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart your comment. And if you want to support the channel and help me out after this video, go ahead and binge watch a bunch of videos, either watch them in the recommended or the playlist, or if you're doing something later in the day or maybe before you go to bed, and make sure to let me know in the comments if you're doing this. I'll try and heart it and say thank you as I really appreciate it. Anyways, let's get right back to the story as things are starting to get interesting. So remember, Jimmy was, was sound asleep, and he's awoken to the sound of noise outside of his tent. So when he gets up and he notices the Minecraft girl, someone who he didn't even really talk to at all, maybe he's like, hey, can you pass the whatever, right, earlier in the day, but he's not really spoken to this girl at all, has wandered into his tent, right? He's a little startled, so he gets up and he's like, hello, and she's like, hi, Jimmy. And Jimmy doesn't know her name. Like, even though I never use their real names, Jimmy said that he just knew her as Minecraft Girl. Like, he didn't know her name. They didn't really wear name tags or anything. I think they went around in a circle, so maybe that's how she remembered it. But she then goes on to say one of the, like, one of the, so she says three incredibly creepy things. And the first incredibly creepy thing that he said, that she says is, hey, Jimmy, I've been watching you for a while. Dude, whenever someone says, I'm watching you, like, just say, like, oh, I've seen you around. Don't be like, I've been deeply observing and mapping your every movements. Like, oh, come on, man. Like, don't say that. And Jimmy's like, okay. She's like, yeah, I've been watching you for a long time, Jimmy. And I'd like, I just, I just can't get enough of you. And Jimmy's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, that's cool, I guess. And the girl's like, Jimmy, I just need to know. Do you want to be my boyfriend? And she looks at him with these like big eyes all wide. And Jimmy's like, dude, I'm having a freaking fever dream right now. Like this definitely isn't real. And he's like, uh, I don't, I don't know you. And she's like, is that a yes or a no? I need to know, Jimmy, please. I need to know. And Jimmy's just like, well, I mean, I kind of have a policy. And he kind of makes this up because like, bro, what? But he, he, he he's like, oh, I kind of got a policy that I got to know someone for a while. I want to start in the friend zone and then make my way to dating them. Maybe if I feel like we're compatible. And the thing is, I just don't know you. Like my first interaction with you has been you kind of wandering into my tent at like presumably very early in the morning. And she's like, is that a yes or a no, Jimmy? Like, please don't like... I, I just need a yes or no. It's really easy. It's really simple. And Jimmy's like, well, respectfully, no, because I don't know you. She sits there for a second, and she kind of looks at the ground. And Jimmy is just like, because uh, it's super uncomfortable, right? He's just sitting there like, uh, like, is she going to leave? What's going to happen? And she looks up, and she's like, you've made a mistake. You better not go to sleep tonight. And Jimmy then asks, like, well, what happens if I do go to sleep? And she's like, well, while you're asleep, I'm going to start to eat you. And when you wake up, you'll have your entire leg will be missing 
and the only thing you'll see is the stump of your leg inside my mouth. And then she just crawls out of his tent. And Jimmy is honestly traumatized. Yes. Do I think she's actually was going to eat him? No. She's just like some goofy Minecraft girl, right? However, she definitely knew what to say like that was super unsettling because when you feel like you're alone in the woods and some creepy girl wanders into your tent and says very strange things, well, let me just say that uh, Jimmy did not sleep that night. Um, yeah, he pulled a complete all-nighter with nothing to read but his book. He basically just sat there and was just like, he, he was basically terrified, right? I don't blame him. I would be super freaked out, even if it was super unlikely. Like, I'm not trying to take a risk of, like, waking up and, like, I don't know, my arm's gone because some weirdo girl ate it because I said no to going on a date with her, which I don't know if this was some tactic to go on a date with Jimmy, but let me just say, if your odds were low before, they're practically zero right now, dude. They're practically at 0.0% chance he's going to date you after you say, oh, let me just eat you, bro, which is just a... Who says that? But anyways, you know, Jimmy, the next day comes around, even though Jimmy's been up the entire night. So Jimmy watches the sunrise and uh, they kind of just, so the deal is the camp, you, you go out and you like, you, you stay the night overnight in the woods on the first night, or I guess the second night minus orientation, which is the first day. And then for the rest of the camp, which is the rest of the week, you kind of do activities at the campsite and you stay in cabins. So you're kind of like thrown into it and then it's kind of like easy mode from there on out. So they pack up their camps or their, not their camps, they pack up their tents, they get it all together. Jimmy is really struggling to stay awake and have enter any energy because he's been up all night because he's been afraid of being eaten or something, which, like, I don't know about you, but that's not my number one concern. And I really don't want it to ever be a number whatever concern. Um, but sure enough, you know, Jimmy is walking back with his group. And he notices, you know, I mean, the Minecraft girl is in his group, right? The Minecraft girl is not in front of him, not beside him, but square behind him. And Jimmy would kind of look behind once in a while and he would see the Minecraft girl was always like five feet behind him. And Jimmy would kind of like, you know, slow down a little bit and she would slow down. He would speed up a little bit. He would, she would speed up. He would move to one side. She would slowly shift over to the other side. And he knew that this girl was really just staying five feet behind him at all times. So he was super weirded out, which I mean, can you blame the man? I mean, this girl threatened to consume him. Like who, what? Huh? And then, like, all of a sudden, she starts stalking him. And so they get back, right? They get back to camp. And uh, Jimmy goes to his cabin. And his cabin mates are like, oh, man, that was the coolest thing ever. Like, Jimmy, how did you feel about that? Jimmy, who has no sleep and is traumatized, is like, guys, uh, can we talk for a second? And his friends are like, yeah, dude, what's up? So Jimmy sits down. And even the camp counselor walks in because, you know, Jimmy kind of wanted an adult in there, too. And Jimmy explained everything that I just told you guys. And all the kids were like, bro, I saw that girl. Like one of them's like, dude, I know that girl. Like I saw her before. She was like hitting someone with a pickaxe and she got in trouble. She's so weird. And all the other kids are like, dude, she said she'd eat you. What? And the camp counselor's like, dude, that's not like that's messed up, man. Like she basically like she scared you. She traumatized you. She also low key threatened you with that, even though it's a very weird threat to make. And the camp council and the camp counselor's camp counselor. God, I can't speak. One like, one like equals one prayer for my brain that's going boom right now. So the camp counselor is like, "Hey, Jimmy, like I think I'm gonna have to report this. Like you're okay with that?" And Jimmy's like, "Actually, yeah, I really don't want to be in any other programs with her. Or really, be around her." And so sure enough, the camp counselor like tells it to the administrators and the other staff or whatever. And the next day rolls around and they start camp with a camp meeting. And they always started the day with a camp meeting. But this time, one of the people in the administration came out and it was normally only camp counselors being like, today's announcement is we're going to be having a bonfire at four. Everyone should come around. Something like that. But no, it was like one of the kind of like administrators in kind of like a more office gear coming over and be like, Hey guys, I just want to remind you that playful or not, you can't make threats of any kind against any other campers. That's just very, it's not allowed here and we will have a zero tolerance from this point on, blah, you know, et cetera, like, like that. And uh, apparently, right, you know, Jimmy went back to the, to the cabin because he had like a morning activity and he didn't see the Minecraft girl anywhere. And when he went back to the cabin, right, uh, 
the, the counselor is like, hey, Jimmy, I just want to let you know that the Minecraft girl is no longer at this camp, and she's also not allowed back. And that announcement this morning was kind of just like after the disciplinary process went through. Uh, apparently the Minecraft girl's mom was called, or parents were called, and, you know, they drove over and got her, and, you know, probably were very, like, why? Why is my daughter like this? Why? But yeah, for the rest of the camp, Jimmy did not need to deal with the Minecraft girl because she just was she was gone. She was kicked out. And Jimmy actually enjoyed the rest of that camp so much that he came back the next year. And he came back the next year without any feelings of worry or dread because the Minecraft girl he was told was banned from that camp. So he came back the next year and enjoyed it. And this time when he actually camped out, he actually had a good time because uh, he was not threatened to be consumed by a random Minecraft girl that was in love with him slash obsessed with him. Click yeah. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today we get a story of a Minecraft kid that destroys his brand new $5,000 gaming PC, which by the way, why would he spend $5,000 on a gaming PC to play Minecraft? But anyways, he destroys it because he gets mad fight playing Minecraft or something, and then he tries to cover it up and blames it on the subscriber, and it is a fantastic story. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber who sent him the story, Eli. So this all happened when Eli and a bunch of other kids were invited over to the Minecraft kid's house. Eli and the Minecraft kid were pretty decent friends, but Eli was better friends with the other people invited, and the Minecraft kid was kind of just friends by proxy. I don't know if you guys are ever in like friend groups where you're really good close friends with some of the people, but not as much the other people, but you end up hanging out with all of them at the same time, just because like that's how the friend group works. So Eli was pretty excited to see the new big gaming PC, and he didn't dislike the Minecraft kid, I want to make that very clear. They were friends, like they were on good terms. I mean, they weren't really friends after what happens in this story, but you'll have to wait to see exactly what that is. But anyways, let's just fast forward to Friday night. They all get out of school, and they go home, and then after a couple hours later, all their parents drive them to the Minecraft kid's house, and they're all excited. I mean, the school week is over, man. Uh, they're going to see their friends. Their friend, the Minecraft kid, got a new gaming PC, and maybe, maybe if they're lucky enough, and if he's feeling generous, they'll get a swing on the most extreme, powerful graphics ever so that they can play Minecraft, which definitely needs 10,000 frames per second that you literally can't even see, but whatever man. Anyways, right, uh, so they all get to the house, and the Minecraft kid's mom greets them. It's like, oh, welcome. Welcome to our little house or whatever. It was not a little house, man. I mean, look, if your mom or dad is buying you a $5,000 gaming PC, they probably have a little bit of spare cash, if you know what I mean. It was a pretty cool house, but none of these kids really cared. They just thought the Minecraft kid was cool, and he was someone to play Minecraft with. Turns out he was not as cool as they thought. But anyways, right, the Minecraft, ki the Minecraft kid runs down the stairs. He's like, guys, guys, I, you gotta come up here right now. And they all kind of like run up the stairs and they got their sleeping bags and their backpacks full of their belongings. It was, it was turning out to be like a really great night. Or so they thought before it went terribly, terribly wrong. But anyways, right, they walk in the Minecraft kid's room and none of them had actually ever been over to the Minecraft kid's house before. All of them had kind of grown up in the neighborhood together and the Minecraft kid came two years ago. So he was kind of like a newer addition. However, the Minecraft kid did like sleep over at their houses before, but they walk in the Minecraft kid's room and it is one of the coolest rooms ever. It's got like a really cool bed and there's all these little fun things and a beanbag chair. And there's like the glowing lights that you see on dorm rooms a lot of time in college. And it's just a really cool setup. And they're like, wow, man, you got the coolest room ever. And he said, and this is the best part. And he turns and he points at his desk. And sure enough, there is a massive monitor. There is a massive like gaming kind of like PC thing on the bottom. There's glowing keyboards and lights or RGB, RB. G, R, G, B. It's R, G, B, not Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's R, G, B. <laughs> and they were like, wow, man, that's the coolest PC I've ever seen. Like, uh, like we got to see you play on it. And the Minecraft kid is just teeming with excitement. He is so excited to, like, show off his new gaming computer. So he sits down. He's like, everyone, watch me obliterate these nerds in Minecraft. So the Minecraft kid, you know, hops on his new super expensive, high resolution, tons of RAM or I don't know, computers that well. 
his new PC that was super expensive, he hops on there, and he loads up Minecraft, and he logs in a Hypixel, and he's like, dude, I'm gonna literally, like, destroy everyone in Bed Wars so hard, it's gonna be so crazy. Bed Wars is a game mode you can play, it's a video game you can play Minecraft in, it's like a mini game for Minecraft, basically, for you guys who don't know, and it's competitive, so you play against other players online. So anyways, he logs in the Bed Wars, and he gets immediately smoked, and let me just say that, yeah, I'm a little annoyed by the level of kind of sweaty people that play all the time. I'm like, dude, just let me have fun. But whatever, that's for another day. And he gets obliterated within like the first minute because some guy like speed bridges over to him, like breaks his bed immediately. And all of his friends are like, dude, watch out. And he just gets like, he just gets flawless, basically. If you don't know what that means in Minecraft when you're fighting someone and you don't even touch them back, you've been flawless. But uh uh, anyways, right, he's like, oh, that's just a fluke. I think my systems are taking a little bit longer to run. At this point, right, the kid is equating, uh, skill and how expensive his PC is, but that's fair enough, right? He's, he's got a good attitude so far. I mean, not, not for long, but I guess you'll see. And so sure enough, he loads up another game and he actually is doing okay. And then he gets obliterated again by another guy. And he's like, bro, I hate this game. And his friends are like, dude, don't worry about it. Like, you're still good. And he's like, yeah, I am. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid loads up another Bed Wars game. And once again, another kid just starts, like, speed bridging over. He's like, bro, like, why is my computer not making me speed bridge? And so the Minecraft kid tries to bridge really fast, but obviously you need to aim right. It's not just if you have good frames per second. So he falls off. He's like, man. And uh, he starts to get really angry during that game. They're like, dude, don't worry about it. Just keep fighting, keep fighting. And sure enough, like he's in the middle, he's grabbing some emeralds, which is something you do in Minecraft, uh, Bed Wars. And he's in the middle of the map and someone breaks his bed, which basically means he can't respawn. He's like, dude, I put like, up, I put endstone down. How do they break that? And they're like, bro, don't worry about it. You got the five grand uh, PC. No one is gonna be able to touch you out here. So sure enough, right, the Minecraft kid has, like, an iron sword, iron armor, he's stacked up, he's got a billion frames per second, he's got all the hurts in the world, whatever that even does, he's got a ton of ram, he's got a ram and a goat in his backyard, like, he's killing it right now, and, uh, sure enough, someone comes up to him and just, uh, W-taps him into the void. He just, like, they start fighting, they start, like, swinging swords at each other, they're PvPing, and he just flies into the void. And the Minecraft kid loses it. He completely loses all control. He's like, I hate this game. And with two, just two motions, right? He destroys his entire PC. The first motion is he takes his mouse and he smashes it into his like super expensive high resolution 1 billion hertz monitor, completely shatters, flies on the ground, and then with another motion, he still has his shoes on, he goes over to his gaming PC and with his big boot on, he kicks it and it actually kind of flies across the room, hits the ground, and you could just hear the insides of that, of that PC shatter. The motherboard, all the chips and the cooling device and the, the memory, all of it just shatters and shakes up. And even the side cracks and some stuff is spilling out. And he's like huffing and puffing. He's like, huh, huh, huh. and Eli, the subscriber, and all of his other friends who were just sitting there are just like, Oh my god. Oh my god, what? What just happened, man? The secret word of the day is not Minecraft. And it normally will be, but the secret word of the day is door. Like, the thing that, like, you have on your room or you enter your house with. Yeah, so comment door down below and I'll heart your comment. Most of you guys won't get that, but for the few OGs of the channel, that will probably bring a little tear to your eye. Also, if you want to support the channel on our road to 600k, there's two things you can do. The first thing is binge watch my videos, aka watch a bunch of videos after this one, or watch a playlist of my videos before you go to sleep or, or, or while you're doing something. Please comment like these people when you're doing that so I can heart it. And also, the second thing you can do is literally tell a friend who you think will like the channel, and hopefully they subscribe. And comment if you do that that too like this person i'll try and heart it anyways back to the story because it gets even crazier from this point on so it's kind of like the calm not before the storm but kind of the calm after the storm because you know the minecraft kid starts like his emotions are slowly shifting from rage to oh my god what did i just do to 
oh my god, my mom is gonna kill me, bro. Like, I, I cannot, this can't happen. So, the Minecraft kid, like, frantically looks over at his friends. He's like, guys, my mom cannot know about this ever. He's like, I need you all to swear to secrecy not to tell her. And Eli and all the kids are like, yeah, dude, like, we're, we're totally not going to tell her. Like, we'll, we're just going to have a good rest of our night. We won't tell her. We'll pretend like nothing happened at all. And Eli's like, hey, like, I even brought my own PC if we want a game on that later. Like, we're still going to have a great night tonight. Things happen, man. Okay, things like this don't normally happen, but they were just trying to make him feel good in this situation. The Minecraft kid's like, thank you, guys. Like, we got to hide this now. Like, we got to... So they... Anyways, right, they find some kind of bag or they put it in the closet. They hide it pretty sloppily, but... I don't know how you're going to properly hide a smashed monitor and a, uh, basically a bag of malfunctioning uh, computer chips, which was his PC like five minutes ago before he obliterated it. And uh, they kind of just go about their day. And at one point, you know, the mom calls them down for dinner. And so they're all sitting at the dinner table and, you know, the Minecraft kid's mom made them like a big thing of mac and cheese, which I'm actually going to make for myself uh, in a couple minutes uh, when I'm done with this video. So mac and cheese on the mind. Anyways, right, so they're all sitting there, they're enjoying their big thing of mac and cheese or whatever, and they totally forget about the gaming computer. Okay, maybe the Minecraft kid is still thinking about it a little bit because he did just destroy his... $5,000 brand new gaming computer and his parents don't know about it. So maybe it's still on his mind. But anyways, they're all sitting there and they're all just not even thinking about it. They're talking about school and how crazy, the, like how fun the last assignment was and how like that one person went up there and like made a fool of themselves. Like they were just doing like standard middle school kid stuff. And that's when all of their drop, all of their like hearts drop and start beating incredibly quickly because they hear the last sound that they wanted to hear. They hear the Minecraft kid's mom walk upstairs and then scream the Minecraft kid's first, middle, and last name. Bro, if your mom screams at you and she says your first, middle, and last name, it's about time for you to pack up and go to Alaska, bro, because you're, you're done, bro. I don't know how else to say it, but you're done. And so whatever conversation they were having before, is it's, it's done and over with because all of them know exactly why the Minecraft kid's mom screamed out his name. And all of them, including the Minecraft kid, are, look, are just sweating. They're, they're looking super anxious at the moment. And they all sit there in dead silence. And no one is eating anymore, right? And sure enough, they hear bump, 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 bump. And they, that's like his mom walking down the stairs. And they're all just like, oh boy, okay, this is not going to be good at all. And uh, the mom walks down, and uh, the Minecraft kid is at the end of the table, so he's facing away from the door, so his mom kind of shows up behind him, but Eli is on the very, uh, like, the very opposite side of the table, so he's looking directly at the door, so he gets the first glimpse at the Minecraft kid's mom's face, and her brow is so furrowed that she's practically created a unibrow. The, like, the look of anger on her face is unmatched, and she comes in, she's like, Minecraft kid, explain your computer now. I walked into your room and your screen thing was destroyed and your computer box was all broken. I just got that for you. Do you have any idea how much $5,000 is? Do you know how hard your dad and I work to get all the great things for you? And you destroyed it. And he's like, the Minecraft kid starts tearing up, right? And everyone feels so bad. Everyone feels so bad until the Minecraft se kid says what he's about to say. He's like, mom, mom, it wasn't me. And then the Minecraft kid turns and he lifts up his hand and with one finger, he points directly down the table. And Eli can almost feel the pointing on his chest. Like, he almost feels like an imprint in his chest when the Eli kid, oh, no, when the Eli kid, when the Minecraft kid with tears falling down his face and, like, his hand pointing directly at him says, It was Eli! He was playing one of the games and he got mad! And then he broke my new computer! And then the Minecraft kid's mom, kid, the Minecraft kid's mom was like, "Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I blamed you." Gave him a big hug, and while giving him a big hug, uh, like Eli was like, "Hey, yo, that, what, what are they saying?" And everyone else at the table was like, "Hey, bro, what?" 
And as she's giving the Minecraft kid a big hug, you could see her face look up, and she has the coldest stare, looking directly into the, the pits of Eli's eyes. And he's like, oh my god. And she's like, Eli, sweetie, can I talk to you for a second? And Eli's like, oh my god. And she's like, uh, out here, please. And sure enough, right, uh, you know, Eli's walking down the table, and he gives a look to the Minecraft kid, like, dude, what's up? And the Minecraft kid just ignores him, just is looking straight ahead. And, you know, he walks out, and the Minecraft kid's mom starts on a rant, saying, like, like that was a super expensive computer you broke. Like, that was a $5,000 computer. I'm not sure if my son told you exactly how expensive that was, but, like, we're gonna, like, you might have to work here for the summer to try and repay at least some of that. Like, this is gonna take forever for us to, and he's like, hey, like, I'm so sorry the computer was broken, but I need to tell you something. And she's like, what? Okay, make it quick. Like, I'm, st I'm in the middle of, like, ranting about you, right? Or ranting to you. And he's like, hey, like, um... I know that, like, this contradicts exactly what your son said, but I need you to know that I did not break the computer. In fact, I did not even have a turn on, on the computer. What actually happened was, you know, the Minecraft kid, who I thought was my friend, you know, invited all of us over to see him play on his new computer, and maybe we would have played at the very end. But we got there, and he was playing, and he wasn't necessarily better at the game, and he thought that he would be because he had an expensive computer, and he got really, really mad and broke his computer out of frustration and rage. And then he told us that we couldn't tell you about it because you'd be super mad, and then we were eating, and then you came down, and then he blamed me. And the mom is like, well, I don't really know how, I, I, how do I know who, who to believe? And, you know, Eli's like, shoot, like, it's really my word or her son's. And then Eli's like, oh, well... I don't know if everyone, I hope people are truthful, but maybe ask all the people to come over individually. Kind of like in a, like a courtroom, how you're interrogated individually, so you can't, if you lie, like the cross-examination will get you. So sure enough, right, Eli walks back to the table and sits down at the end of it, and is just not making any eye contact with the Minecraft kid, and it's not like the Minecraft kid is trying to make any eye contact either. But then the mom starts calling out the names of each of the individual kids one by one. And you can't really hear what they're talking about, but Eli knows exactly what they are talking about. And the Minecraft kid is like, uh, uh, uh. And eventually, the last kid is called in and walks back in and sits down. And the Minecraft kid's mom walks back into the room with kind of a sense of calmness because her initial rage with seeing the expensive thing she bought for her son destroyed has kind of washed over her and it's more kind of like, all right, I got to be the parent here. I can't like lose myself. She's like, all right, well, um, I, I don't know if we should continue the sleepover. There's been a lot of things going on and uh, I, I really do need to have a good heart-to-heart -heart talk with my son. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid's face goes from no expression, kind of trying to ignore eye contact with everyone, to just like, boing, oing, 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 just like, oh no, she knows, bro. Just like, oh shoot, they all told. And sure enough, right, uh, the Minecraft kid's mom calls all the parents, and it's kind of an awkward, like, 30 to 40 minute period, because all the parents were like, ah, oh, we were going, at, like, because the parents were going out, they were taking advantage of the, the time, like, being, like, the house alone, so the Minecraft kid's mom was, actually had to drive home, like, half the kids, because the parents were out for some reason, and so, let's just skip ahead to the next day, so, or not even the next day, let's skip ahead to Monday, it was school, and they all kind of came back, and they were all sitting at lunch table, and the Minecraft kid came and sat down, and he was like, guys, I really need to apologize. And he looked directly at Eli like, bro, I threw you under the bus. I just couldn't handle my mom being that angry at me. What I did was wrong and I want to apologize. I don't expect you to forgive me, man. Like I was a total jerk and I'm sorry. And Eli's like, well, you were a total jerk, but I can understand how scary that must have been. And he's like, you know what, bro? It's good. Obviously never do anything like that again. Obviously, right? I, I wish I didn't have to say that, but he's like, I can understand like how crazy of a situation that is. We're cool. And kind of like the Minecraft kid had a little smile. Look, guys, not all my stories end terribly, but it's not over yet. One second. And uh, <laughs> sure enough, right? You know, the, they, Eli's like, well, if you don't mind, can I ask what the punishment was? We, we just really want to know. And Minecraft kid's like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the least you, like, that's the least I can do to pay you back for what I put you through. And Minecraft kid's like, yeah, so... After you guys all left, my uh, mom was very upset with me. She was not yelling at me, but she was giving me 
you know, what's almost worse, like the passive mom, like the passive aggressive mom, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed, bro, please be angry, just don't be disappointed, man, that's what I'm trying to say, but anyways, eventually, when El when the Minecraft kid's dad got home, uh, he was not happy about it either, and basically, right, the Minecraft kid will not be getting a new computer for a very long time, and he's basically banned from going on his iPad, which is how he was really playing Minecraft a lot before, which explains why he sucks so much when he went on his PC, because it's totally different, right? Mechanics are totally different, all that stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm banned from the iPad for two weeks. I gotta, like, do schoolwork when I get back, and I can't hang out with you guys on the weekends for, like, in those two weeks as well. And, but he said, other than that, like, I'm, I kind of got off lucky. Like, I thought they were gonna, like, the punishment would have been worse. And yeah, so that's the conclusion of why you should not uh, obliterate your gaming PC because you lose in bed. Click on the video well. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we got a story of this crazy Minecraft girl that ends up attacking the subscriber. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. So subscribe if you like stories. And let's call today's subscriber, let's call him Hudson. So the subscriber who sent in this story, we're calling him Hudson. And Hudson got a new girlfriend. And Hudson and this new girlfriend had been dating for probably about a month at this time. And Hudson had never been over to his girlfriend's house. Hudson's girlfriend knew about him and was totally fine with it. And, you know, I think the reason that they just never saw each other at each other's houses is they were just kind of busy for the last, like, month or so. But one weekend, right, Hudson's girlfriend is like, hey, like, do you want to come over? So this was, like, a tomorrow. So this was, like, a Friday, right? So she's like, hey, do you want to come over Saturday? Do you want to just, like, hang out for the entire day? And, you know, Hudson was like, yeah, sure, like, is this at your house? And the girlfriend's like, yeah, like, I talked to my parents, they're totally okay. In fact, they're going to be away, so the only person who's going to be in the house is going to be you and me and my little sister, but she'll probably just be playing Minecraft with her friends or whatever, she'll be in her room the whole time. So it's really going to be just, like, you and me in the house alone. And Hudson was really excited because, like, you know, this is his new girlfriend or whatever, and this is a pretty big deal. So anyways, right, sure enough, you know, Hudson is, like, driven over by his mom to, you know, his new girlfriend's house, and his mom it's like, bye, honey, have a good time. Don't have too good of a time. Wink, wink. Hudson's like, mom, shut up. Like, I don't want to hear that. She's like, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, typical mom behavior. You love to see it. But anyways, right, you know, so Hudson walks up to the door. His new girlfriend greets him at it and says, oh, like, you know, this is the first time we're not, we're actually seeing each other at each other's houses. And, you know, Hudson's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. So she's like, all right, come in. Uh, I have lunch prepared. And, you know, Hudson was like, damn, you have lunch prepared? Like, all right, let's go. Yeah, she made some mac and cheese. You'll love to see it. So, you know, Hudson sat down at the, d at, at, like, the dinner table, got a bowl of mac and cheese, was just talking with his girlfriend. This seemed like it was going to be the greatest day ever, right? However, uh, there was a bit of a complication that happened a little bit later on, as you can probably tell by the title. The, uh, the sister, Huds uh, Hudson's girlfriend's sister, we're going to call the Minecraft girl from here on out. So if you hear me say Minecraft girl, what I'm saying is Hudson's girlfriend's sister. It's just a lot cleaner, and I'm not going to trip up over my words as I always do, so yeah. So as Hudson and his girlfriend are sitting at like the kitchen table just talking or whatever, they hear footsteps, they, they hear footsteps come down the stairs, and, you know, Hudson looks over, and it's this girl who's probably about, like, I don't know, like, Hudson and his girlfriend are both 16. This girl is probably 13 or 14 or something like that. She walks down the stairs in these, like, knee-high socks, this, like, sweatshirt or whatever, and this, like, creeper hat or whatever. And she walks down, and she just gives Hudson this look. This look of, like, I don't know who you are, but you better stay away from my sister type look of, like, I don't like you, I won't ever like you, and I, like, you gotta, like, watch yourself type look. So Hudson's girlfriend's like, oh, Hudson, this is my sister, like, Minecraft girl says her actual name or whatever, right? And uh, Hudson's like, oh, Minecraft girl, it's, it's nice to meet you, and the Minecraft girl kind of looks at him as, like, hi. It kind of just, like, gives him this kind of look of, like, I don't like you, bro. And, you know, Hudson's girlfriend was like, eh, okay, yeah, okay, that's enough of an introduction for you two. And sure enough, right, you know, the Minecraft world really just comes down to, like, get something to eat and goes straight back upstairs. And Hudson, after she has obviously, like, left and has gone back up to her room, Hudson turns to his girlfriend and is like, hey, like, uh, does she normally, like, not like people, like, that come over and, you know, Hudson's girlfriend's like, uh, you know, I don't think she's, like, super... She It takes a while. Like, she's great, but it takes a while for, like, new people to get used to her and for the other vice versa as well. Don't worry. Like, don't don't judge a first interaction with her as, the like, the 
as who she really is. She, you just need to thaw to her. Like, you need to, she needs to get used to you. Which, uh, well, I mean, she was about to get used to him very quickly, but in the worst way possible. Because let's flash forward, like, half an hour or so. So Hudson and his girlfriend are like, all right, well, we can go watch TV. So they go sit on the couch, and they're watching some Netflix program or whatever. And at some point, Hudson's girlfriend's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Like, don't go anywhere. And Hudson's like, all right, I got you. So Hudson kind of, like, you know, goes on his phone because the, Net- the Netflix program is paused or whatever. And he's just pretty paying, he's paying attention to his phone so he doesn't hear the footsteps come up like very quietly behind him and the only time and he only realizes that someone is behind him when he feels a like a whap on the back of his head he's like ow he turns around and he sees the minecraft girl aka hudson's girlfriend's little sister with a like one of those foam minecraft pickaxes and he realizes pretty quickly that he that she just like hit him over the head with the minecraft pickaxe and then once again bats him over the head and is like you better stay away from my sister. So then all of a sudden, both, you know, the Minecraft girl and Hudson hear, like, you know, a, like a toilet flush, and then, uh, you know, kind of, like, you know, like the, you know, when you rinse your hand, like, water's running or whatever in the sink, right? So both of them hear that, and the Minecraft girl is like, you heard me, like, stay away from my sister. Gets up and runs away. Runs back upstairs to her bed wars or whatever, right? And so Hudson's kind of sitting there like, uh, oops. Key. I'm not sure how to react to that. And Hudson's girlfriend sits down. She's like, what? And Hudson's like, uh, and she's like, your face, like, some, wh- wh- what's wrong? Because, like, Hudson's girlfriend could kind of read him like a book at this point. They were good for each other, bro. But Hudson was like, yeah, so it's not a big deal, but, like, I was sitting here, and I felt like something hit me in the back of my head. It didn't hurt that much, obviously, but I turned around, and it was your little sister, and then she hit me in the head again with that little foam pickaxe, like, from Minecraft. It's not a big deal. It obviously didn't hurt. But then she said, stay away from my sister. So, you know, Hudson's girlfriend is like, you know, that's it. Like, you stay right here again. And Hudson sits there as he hears, you know, his girlfriend walk up and starts, like, talking very loudly to, like, you know, most, like, presumably the Minecraft girl. And he can't really make out what's being said, but you can assume that, like, don't treat, like, my boyfriend like that. I get that he's new here and that you don't know him. And even if you're trying to be protective, stop it. It's just weirding him out, like, thank you for wanting the best for me, but not like this, yada, yada, stuff like that. So the girlfriend comes back down, it's like, sorry, like that should be dealt with. Like if she, if you see her again, she's going to be chill. So Hudson's like, all right, cool. Uh, Spoiler, a little spoiler alert for you guys. Uh, She is the opposite of chill from this point on. Real quick, comment a Minecraft down below if you want to harden your comment. That will be the secret word of the day, and I'll try and hard as many of those comments as I possibly can. And also, if you do want to support the channel, uh, binge watch some videos, either watch some playlists or click on videos in the recommended. And please, if you're doing this, leave me a comment down below, like these people, so that I can say thank you by harding it or maybe replying by saying thank you, because that supports the channel so much. Anyways, back to the story. So anyways, right, Hudson's uh, girlfriend's parents are going to be out for probably the entire night, or at least that's what Hudson's girlfriend said. So she decides that she's going to make dinner, and Hudson's like, oh, cool, awesome. And so Hudson's girlfriend makes the dinner and, uh, you know, eventually he's like calls down her sister and calls in the boyfriend like, all right, guys, dinner's ready. So, uh, you know, anyways, you know, Hudson, you know, you know, walks over to the dining room and, uh, you know, sits down and, you know, the girlfriend, uh, sits down and also the little sister, AKA the Minecraft, the Minecraft girl sits down and she's like being super awkward, making no eye contact at all with, you know, Hudson kind of understandably, right. And all of a sudden, right, you know, Hudson's girlfriend's like, Hey, I want to go show you something. And she looks at the Minecraft girl and is like, all right, we'll, we'll be right back. And I don't know. I wasn't told exactly, by the way, this story was submitted over on Instagram. Uh, go follow me on there. It's in the description and submit your stories there. But anyways, right. I wasn't told exactly what the girlfriend told Hudson, but anyways, they come back and Hudson realizes that, you know, the sister, the little sister, AKA the Minecraft girl's face goes from a face of like, I don't know, like, I'm feeling very weird, like, I, like, this is awkward, to a face of, like, evil. Like, she has an evil grin on her face. So, right away, Hudson is like, all right, bro, this is a little weird, this is a little strange, I don't know how I feel about this. And he sits down, and he's just, like, goes to take a big chug of water. And he takes a big chug of water, and immediately, like, spits it out. And the girlfriend's like, are you okay? And he's like, wow, this water is so salty. So the girlfriend grabs his water glass, sticks her finger in it, kind of like licks her finger and looks immediately at like uh, at her little sister. And is like, did you do this? And the little sister is like, yeah, 
stay away from my big sister and while looking at Hudson. And sure enough, right, you know, the Hudson's girlfriend starts yelling at the little sister, like, I already told you to stop being, like, weird. I already told you that, like, we're, like, great for each other. And just, like, you don't have to like him, but don't be weird about it. Like, it was strange already enough that you bopped him over the head with, like, a a foam pickaxe, right? But now you're trying to make his food taste bad. Like, either way, like, if we're breaking up, it's not because of you. And, like, if anything, like, we're, we have a stronger bond now, even if that wasn't true. She just said it, right? And she's like, you know what? You know what? Go up to your room. And the Minecraft girl's like, you know what? Like, you don't have any authority over me. And, and you know, the old Hudson's girlfriend is like, I don't 